I'm just wondering when the black community gonna realize the Democratic Party does not take us seriously. Or more so, they don't think they were smart. Their strategy for decades has been hiring black entertainers to endorse them. Fast forward 2024, they're still doing the same thing. It is even worse. Because now they sprinkling a little bit of ratchetness into it for relatability. And I'm just like, last election, Joe Biden's campaign for the black vote was telling black people that they not black if they don't vote for him. And getting some strippers to twerk with the word vote wrote on their booty. And also, for some odd reason, hiring Cardi B to endorse him, even though Cardi B's not black, but she was used to get the black vote. Not her own people vote, but our vote. Now we got Kamala Harris throwing a rally and Megan Thee Stallion is performing. Megan Thee Stallion is twerking. And y'all swear to God, this is to reach the black youth and get the black. Listen, these people don't take us seriously. They are not twerking and dancing and partying to get anybody else's vote. They are discussing policies, new laws, bills, resolutions for their community. They don't do that for us though. Kamala Harris literally got in office and told y'all that she's not gonna push nothing for black people just because she's black. That should have let y'all know right then and there. They only want the black vote for numbers so that they can get elected. But they ain't got nothing for black people. And no, this is not an endorsement for Trump or the right or Republican party. This is simply a critique to Democrats to be more serious when engaging with black American voters. We are not a monolith. We're not all ignorant. We're not all party heads. And matter of fact, there's a time and place for all of this. We can party and we can get serious about policies and laws to protect us. You do not have to dumb yourself down to engage with black Americans. And bless Megan Thee Stallion's heart, because while I know it was a big thing for her to perform, it just made her look like a puppet to me. She shouldn't have showed up as Megan Thee Stallion. She should have been Megan Pete. She should have had a speech. She shouldn't have been doing TikTok dances. Like, I don't know y'all, I'm just so annoyed. Nobody takes her seriously. And Malcolm X himself clocked his teeth years ago. I can't believe that y'all haven't tried to revamp. Like, this is crazy. I'm gonna pick a black woman. They picked the a woman that's a part of the establishment. She's not genuine. She's not authentically black. She don't identify as black. She identified as an Indian. Ain't no black person on planet Earth identify with what they mix with. Name one. Na name one. Name somebody you know that's mixed and they identify with the other race. None. You'll never see a black and Hispanic person say I'm Hispanic. And then one day they say they black, but then another day they Hispanic. You will never see a person mixed with black and white say they white. You show me. And I'll take this, I'll, I'll delete my whole channel. You can't find any, Barack Obama didn't do it. When did Barack Obama's history did he say, I'm white? Barack Obama's the first white man to do this and this and that. Never, it, it would never exist. She hoodwinked y'all fools. Same thing with Katanji Brown Jackson. I'm gonna pick a black woman in the Supreme Court. That don't mean she's, that don't mean that she is qualified. Y'all hook, line, and sinker. And then what happened? Put the black person out there. Don't give them a chance to vote. Don't make her compete. Don't make her do any interviews don't do no research don't do nothing she black negroes get in line like plies negroes like plies get in line no you don't need to think for yourself you too dumb to think let us think for you we picked her you gotta vote for her because she black because we said she black and she a aka let me get to this video man plies said the dumbest thing on planet earth and, and Charlemagne finally said something that made sense and then the girl that i played at the very end is just as dumb as plies i'm gonna play the clip and I have to break down what he's saying because it's completely stupid. Now, to dumb Negroes and some other people who are left behind, it, it may sound normal, but let me let me clarify for you. Let me translate for you. Roll the clip. Just real quick. <laughs> but to everybody who, especially the ones who who, who, who look like me and the, the, the men who look like me who quit the ah uh, she if she Kamala want my vote she need to explain herself to me what she gonna do for the black people. Listen. Stop asking a motherfucking black woman to explain they stuff to you or explain they stuff to y'all. If y'all ain't willing to ask a motherfucking white man, this motherfucker explain his stuff. Y'all cool with the white man not explaining his stuff, his motherfucking stuff to you. But the motherfucking black woman, she need to explain herself to me what she gonna do for the black community. She want my vote, she need to explain herself. You ain't motherfucking asking the white man to explain his motherfucking stuff. You so does that make it any smarter? Y'all not gonna ask the white man or the black woman. So y'all not gonna ask nobody. You're just supposed to vote for these people. You too motherfucking scared, I ask him. Motherfucking 
I might need to explain some of y'all. Well, she she been in the office already three and a half years. Why why she ain't do all the things she said she was gonna do? Cause she ain't the president. That's why. When you go to the mother Mike no, that lady that's the mother manager. She don't get to do what she wanna do. She might can give you some mother fries, but that's about it. Some free mother That's about that's about all she can mother do. But she can't change the. My black people, I hear a lot of y'all saying y'all voting for Kamala Harris because she's a black female. Y'all know she just became black. She was Indian, she was Jamaican, but she was never black. And then she did a, a, a something a while ago where she said, am I going to do anything for just black people? No. Y'all look up her history. That woman put more black people in jail. She does not like you. She don't give a shit about you. But y'all want to put her in office because she a black woman. And you're going to be sorry if she wins. And I'm going to get on TikTok and say, told you so. Stop asking me who I'm going to vote for because it will never be Kamala. Okay, I don't want to hear your think pieces. I don't want to hear she's black. She's one of us. We need to get the first woman president. I'm not voting for anybody over a gender. That doesn't even make sense. That's not even intelligent. That's not even logical. I'm, I'm not doing that. Let alone the fact that she's not a black American. So that, that has nothing to do with me anyway. And the person who did a whole interview saying that she would never do anything solely for black Americans. You lost me. You can't make me feel bad about not voting for her. I don't care. Does that mean that I'm going to vote for anybody else? I don't know. But I'm damn sure not giving her my vote. I'll take the other option if I had to choose. But until I hear something for my people, some tangibles, some policies that are specifically for black Americans, I don't know. I might just sit this one out completely. And I don't want to hear every vote counts, every vote counts. You vote to receive something in return. Okay, voting means that I'm giving you my support so that you can actually support me in something that I need. Not one of them have talked about anything that black Americans specifically need. I've heard policies for immigrants. I've heard what they want to do for other people that are not even from this country. I've heard all of that. But we didn't we didn't build this country and every motherfucking thing and still ain't got shit for it. And you think about the rush to the voting booths to give Somebody who just started identifying as black yesterday, my vote? You, no, I'm not doing that. All the pandering, I could collard greens in my bathtub. I had to make so many collard greens, I had to put them in a the bathtub. That's how I know you're not black. That's how I know you're not black. Because who the fuck would ever do that? A black person is going to use that sink over and over and over until all them greens is washed. We dare not, dare not ever Wash some fucking collard greens in a bathtub. Have you lost your mind? You can't pander me out of my vote. One minute she got a southern accent. The next minute she's talking like a, a, a valley girl. I'm confused. Who are you? You ain't never lived in the South a day in your life. How do you have a southern accent? I'm not doing it. I don't care how you feel. Your words can't hurt me. My words are bigger and better and better. I guarantee you that. So your little two cents won't do nothing for me. You can't bully me into voting for who you want me to vote for. You can't pander. It's not going to work. So until I make my mind up, I'm undecided. But it's definitely not going to be her. I guarantee you that. And if I got to vote for the orange man, I will. Before I vote for her, I'm not doing it. child y'all is eating me up in them comments when i start talking about y'all president well check this out when donald trump was in office did he or was he a dictator um because last time i checked putin is a dictator and he ain't been out of office since she got in it and last time i checked when a dictator get in office they ain't going nowhere right that's the one man show if that were the case with donald trump 
he didn't treat his presidency as a dictatorship. A lot of y'all don't understand that if you vote for Kamala Harris, you are saying yes to sexual perversion. You're saying yes to your children being able to make sex changes. You're saying yes to open borders, which are still open right now. You're saying yes to all of these people who aren't from the USA, has not been born here, has not been bred here, coming here and getting things more than what the people here deserve. They're getting money. They're getting food. They're getting homes. You got people in every major city homeless on the street right now. You got veterans that don't fought for this country that can't even get a freaking loan. They can't even get housing what they need. They can't get what they need. A lot of them out here homeless. And y'all sitting up here talking about some, oh, you need to, you, you failed civics and all of that. That ain't got nothing to do with what I said. Y'all said she's the vice president and the only power, she don't have no power, but the only responsibility for her is to be in place if something was to happen to the president. Well, something been happened to him way before he took office. The man is incompetent. The man cannot run this country and they knew that and they still let that man be president. Y'all think that lady ain't been running the things behind the scenes? She been, she the one been running stuff. And the same policies that he put in place are the same policies that she's running on now. She ain't changed nothing. She ain't came and spoke to the people and told y'all nothing different that she's going to do besides what they said three years ago. I don't know about y'all, but I can't vote for somebody that is okay with uh, aborting children all the way up until birth. I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with her saying that it's okay for children to love who they want to love and, and be who they want to be when when you 10 years old or when you 14 your brain is not fully developed so how are you gonna make a permanent life decision by getting a sex change or getting puberty blockers right as a child this is who y'all want to vote for y'all want to vote for somebody who was in charge of the border for the last three years and it ain't nothing changed. It's millions and millions and millions of people that have crossed that border. They have given them money. They have given them homes. Y'all have seen the stories about people getting food stamps, thousands of dollars. About that story, they seen the receipt and it was like thirteen dollars or $15,000 balance on that food stamp card. Half of y'all can't even get food stamps and need them. Like I said, I said what I said. I don't care about none of y'all talk about some civics and, and you don't know this and you don't know how the branches of government work. Let me tell y'all something. I was a straight A student, 4.2 GPA out of high school. Went to college, 3.8 GPA. So I don't care what y'all talking about. My intelligence will not be disrespected or attacked because at the end of the day, I know that I'm very intelligent. But I also have common sense. And I also know that what they stand for, this country is doomed. Y'all, the people that got kids, y'all ought to be on your P's and Q's when it comes to putting, wanting to listen to what this lady has to say when it comes to that. Y'all talk about do your research and, and look at the policies and stuff that she put in play when she was, you know, in Congress and this and that. I ain't trying to hear that because she was locking up your brothers and your daddies and your uncles and, and whoever else was black for stupid stuff like marijuana when they got it legalized now. That's dumb. Come on now. Y'all talk about the, him being a dictator and we on a slave plant plantation. Was you on the slave plantation, what, six years ago? No. And then y'all talk about, oh, we still... Uh, under the Obama administration or we still under Trump's uh, tax plans and stuff like that. Don't y'all know when Biden got in office, he signed 90 executive orders undoing the things that the Trump administration did. But y'all know what y'all talk about though. Okay, I digress. Good day.
Y'all not about to like what I'm about to say, but I'm about to say it anyways. I know the police and the military and the government ain't scared of no Venezuelans with some guns. Let it be a gang of black people. I bet you we wouldn't be sitting online talking about some, they got some squatters rights. Oh, the mayor and the government. Oh, nobody knows what to do. Police officers in this government have violated black people's rights for decades. Now all of a sudden the police want to tiptoe around somebody's rights talking about they got squatters rights. Violate their rights the same way that y'all violate our rights. We're all that rah-rah energy now. Y'all want to act like y'all so big, bad, and tough when y'all come up against black people. But now these Venezuelans out here terrorizing, y'all want to act like y'all scared, talking about some rights. Y'all don't give a damn about nobody's rights. Let this have been some black people doing this type of shit. It would have been the SWAT team. They would have had the fucking Marines up in there. They would have been having helicopters everywhere. And they ain't released no tear gas, no pepper spray, no tasers, no bullets, no nothing. We get it all though. Black people, we get it all though. We can't hold a pot of boiling water. We can't be outside selling cigarettes. We can't be riding in our car coming home from work. We can't be sleeping in our beds in our own homes. I don't want to hear all that nice, nice shit from the government and the police, the mayor, whoever. Because that's what y'all do to us. That's the energy that we get. So what's the difference? Now I told y'all when y'all come for me I come back and since people like to think they slick I need to come on by here and show them I do oil changes Now we gonna address this We lost another one to the code First of all who is another one Cause I don't even know you When were we together hmm? Skin folks don't make us kin folks And sometimes dirt is thicker than blood if you know what I'm saying. So how could you lose somebody you don't know? How many of my bills have you paid? How many children do I got? Do you even know that? No, you don't. So we ain't lost nothing. And then you're going to say, we lost another one to the cult. The only hateful, evil, vile, occultic type of people is yourself. Because you're trying to make people who look like you vote for somebody who under false pretense supposed to be like you. Is you out of your mind? We cannot be this ignorant in this day and age. I'm not voting for anybody else based on their color. And let me explain to you what I mean. The only time that I have ever voted was in 2008, ignorantly, blindly, based on color. I did not know anything about Barack Obama until the night he was elected. And God opened up my eyes and showed me he was everything anti-God. He was a whole demon. And his policies proved to be so. So I vowed that I would never, ever vote in any political party ever again. I can legislate in the spirit realm. You understand me? Because that's where real work takes place. However, y'all pushing me over there to the coat. Patriots. Can I be a part of y'all coat? That's what they call y'all a coat. The same people walking around here calling this man uh, a racist, but in the same token, say his color of his skin is orange and call him racist when they really racist. Most vile and evil is people that will attack their own kind because they won't go the way that they want them to go. No, I'm not no sucker. Lollipops get licked and I'm not one. These people policies put my son in the dirt for your information and hundreds of thousands of other parents are bleeding life sentences of pain behind their policies so you go right on ahead and vote Kamala I'm gonna be right behind you with a force voting her arse right on up out of there she not even gonna make it period she not even gonna make it and we can come back and have that conversation when, when she does not but for right now you patriots can I come and be a part of y'all code? Because I'm, I'm, I'm leaning, okay? I don't care if it's Ronald Reagan, uh, John F. Kennedy, I, Donald Trump, anybody except that party. Can I come and join y'all code? Let me know in the comment section below and let him know too. Man, look, bro. You gonna sit on my page talking about what Trump done. Nigga, what Kamala did besides lock niggas up by the millions, bro? The proof is out there. Go watch a Judge Joe Brown video. Somebody who knew her personally. He was a judge. She was a prosecutor, man. Go listen to what that man got to say. The lady ain't smart. She slept her way to the top. She's a hoe. That's why she went and got another hoe, Megan Thee Stallion, to try to entice the rest of you niggas and hoes. See, I, 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 I'm a black man. I'm a young black man. I ain't no nigga. 
I ain't no street nigga. I, I ain't with none of that nigga Negro bullshit, bro. I'm a black man. I get up, go to work, pay taxes. Fuck you time about, bro. Y'all, y'all, y'all can miss me with that. And I fight any one of y'all. Any of y'all black people that's in my thing. Boy, I got hands. I know how to fight, G. I'm still from the hood. Don't, 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 don't confuse what I say on here with who I am. Like, I will slap the dog shit out of anyone. Like, y'all black people will not intimidate me. Don't scare me. None of that shit. Y'all motherfuckers, y'all motherfuckers want us to vote for Kamala so she can immediately start locking up black fathers and taking them out the motherfucking household for petty ass crimes. Like, like the way y'all do y'all research to dislike Trump, do y'all research to figure out who the fuck Kamala is, bro. It's other black people out here telling y'all about motherfucking Kamala, bro. And one thing, and one thing, bro, one thing I can appreciate about the nigga Trump. Man, if he don't like you, he gonna say that shit. If he don't like you, he gonna say that shit. If if Trump ain't like black people, he'll be like, excuse, excuse me, Mr. Black Man, sir, can, can, can you move over there? Like, come on, bro, get the fuck out of here. Trump brought a black woman on stage that had elegance, that was educated, that was smart, that made us look good, made it look like we was more than niggas and hoes. Who the fuck did Kamala bring up there? Mind you, Dr. Umar had already said before Kamala even brought Megan Thee Stallion up there, Dr. Kumo, uh, Dr. Umar already said, let's see what rapper she goes and gets. The Democrat, let's see what rappers the Democrats try to go get to entice black people to vote for them. And what the fuck she do? She went up there and got Quavo talking about walk it like you talk it. They not like us. Bitch, you not like us. Fuck out of here. We don't take pictures with collard greens. We eat them motherfuckers fuck is you time i ain't never seen black people take pictures with collard greens we eat them motherfuckers fuck is wrong with her bro stop this bullshit bro y'all y'all i ain't scared of y'all black people bro i will get up out this bed and commence the whooping ass y'all better leave me the fuck alone i ain't even never say who i was voting for any motherfucking way bro so y'all y'all don't scare me bro i ain't these motherfuckers bro y'all y'all if it's a problem drag your ass to cincinnati and get knocked the fuck out like your daddy used to Today is a sad, sad fucking day because after seeing the Kamala interview, I think we all have come to a conclusion that they would have been better off with fucking Sleepy Joe. This was the most preposterous shit. Why is she always laughing? Did somebody tell you a fucking knock knock joke without us knowing about it? Knock knock, who's there? These, these who? These. She kept looking down at the table for notes as she looked up. Making the shit so obvious, you read and know. You make the shit more obvious than Sleepy Joe. What is going on here? And ooh, don't ask this motherfucker nothing. Oh my God, he won't answer a damn thing. If the FBI was interrogating him, they won't get a motherfucking thing out of him. They will give up within a matter of minutes. He don't know nothing, he ain't been nothing. He don't know. Answer me this one motherfucking question. Are you black? I kid you not. She literally looks at the interviewer, laughs, and say next question. Black women of America, if that don't tell you the truth, I don't know what will. This shit was an episode out of Simpsons. They know what's going on. They know the conditions of the country. They know what they have brought. And the fact he gets on camera in this interview and constantly make it seem like the shit isn't going on and that it's all in our heads. It's pure insanity. I got a public school education. I could have did better than this shit. I did one year in a community college and I could have articulated this shit better than her. Fucking Dennis the Menace could have did better than this shit. They should have just kept Sleepy Joe. They, they should have just kept him. <laughs> I'll be honest. They should have just kept that motherfucker. <laughs> black because her daddy from jamaica now that's a whole nother story too because some folks are saying his nationality is jamaican some folks are saying that he's still uh uh indian just uh top black to me because that's a geographical location that ain't a color but i'm gonna leave that alone the same way we got white south africans top black to me they're white folks that claim to be african because they live on the continent don't mean they black and some of the, the indians over there they blacker than some of us they got more melanin than some of us it seemed like so don't don't y'all play with it but I want you all to look at that and everybody tell me what Kamala said in the chat. Everybody, whoever saw the interview of Kamala, y'all gotta go, my ride is coming up. Getting ready to pull up. How many of y'all saw the interview that she just did? Yes, Vicky is beautiful, Nash. Thank you so much, sir. Listen, what did she say? 
Next question. I think I'm going to have to have my team get me some t-shirts that say, with, with, with Kamala's, a piece of her face on it that say, next question. When it came down to her color, she didn't say she's proud of her identity. She didn't, she didn't even need to say the word black, y'all. She didn't even say she was proud. She said, next question. She refused to identify as black. When are y'all going to wake up and smell the begonias? Why is that important? Because she knows that that has been important to the black grassroots. She knows that's been a point of contention. And for her to ignore the concerns of her people, for her to disassociate herself because she knows she got you ninjas in the bag. She don't need to say it because you out there fighting for her, fool. You out there saying that she pro-black, pro-reparations, and she didn't say none of that. She knows she got a bunch of ignorant, uh, 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 melanated black folks in America that's out here fighting like a fool, saying stuff she didn't say. Y'all out here talking about because she was, she went to a HBCU, that she black. How many of y'all know in America, we always mock, especially the black boule that went to HBCU. That ain't never been no calling card of your true blackness. In fact, that might work against you in America. That's how you know y'all really trying to push that South Indian uh, that, that, that Indian part of her. Hey, my brother Dave Anderson in the field of the business, but he said today we understand the ethnicity over nationality. Exactly. We don't even need to understand that. All we need to understand is her energy. No truly black person would be no DA and fight the Supreme Court and refuse to release prisoners. That ain't black. No black person that's in the position of a DA will sit there and try to lock up black mamas and daddies and think that's a cute policy and bust out laughing. Brother Zebulon, Vicky, I love your beautiful truth like your mind reading the queen. Thank you, precious. That's what we need to focus on. Her energy ain't black. What she stands for, her policies aren't black. No black person would ever sit there and push and support and laugh locking up black mamas and daddies when they are DA over just the South uh, 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 San Francisco and nobody would sit there and fight a court who never typically issues orders to release nobody from prison to keep folks behind bars and justify cheap labor. Nobody black would do that. You understand? That's what we need to focus on. Like I said, it opened up the door for folks to start talking about her nationality and get real deep about what we call ethnicity and what's not. Her energy ain't black. We tell black folks who black, they ain't black. When they start aligning themselves with white supremacy, tell the truth. Tell the truth, somebody. So I want you all to play that video because when you're running for office, you are supposed to speak to your constituency. You're supposed to speak to the group, especially when you know something is a particular flashpoint. Now, let me tell y'all something. As I said before, who did she give her first interview with? CNN, didn't she? Who did she stand up in the media? What is the so-called black media, the national black journalist? Remember? All you ninjas went out there and went off on her because the national black uh, journalist met with Trump. Trump came and did an interview, but the national black journalist said they always had extended invitation to both presidential candidates. That's their history. Get Gary out of my chat, somebody. Get Gary Cooper out of my chat. Get these demons and devils out of this chat real quick. Thank y'all so much. So listen, Kamala didn't go. The media wrote a, a, a lying puff piece talking about, oh, she didn't go because, you know, when she just became the nominee, so she got uh, other uh, uh, things that she got to do, things that she has to do. Then they threw in the article, the griot, she also has to go to uh, 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 um, Representative Jackson's funeral. The event they had was about four, five days, y'all. She stood at the black meter. She didn't even give them the respect of giving them the first major interview. But had the nerve to comment on what Trump said about her at the it, uh, during uh, during uh, the interview that he had with the National Black Journalist. Now, folks are out here saying, "How many of y'all saw the the uh, broadcast I did on my channel here at Piccadilly TV?" This ain't no disrespect to nobody that's one of my followers, but I will never follow no woman nowhere. I'm just being honest, cause black people. 
As a black man, I lived in a matriarchy my whole fucking life. And I seen how emotions override actual facts and values that actually fucking work. My mama told me my daddy was shit. Why she beat him up for getting my hair cut and getting me some brand new shoes. She literally beat him up for that. I'm not following the woman no fucking well. And they, I know y'all black women fist to come and say, who hurt you? My mama. My first time going to jail was from my mama. I beat somebody up for my mama because they hit her and she sent me to jail. That ain't no goddamn lie. I ain't making shit up when I say that. My mama sent me to jail. This one really gonna hurt. Most black men, they first time ever getting the police called on them, it be by a black woman. My great grandmother was a U.S. Senate, and not one of her children was shit. Not even her sp grandchildren, nobody until my mama had children, and her son became a millionaire. Yeah. And she still gonna vote against me. You think I give a damn? You think I'm about to vote with a black woman? I'm gonna call her black. Fuck no, I ain't blow voting for her ass. Just to show you I ain't lying. This is my great grandmother, Annie Smart, U.S. Senate. Not one of her children was shit because she kicked her husband out. We were supposed to be Armstrongs. She kicked her husband out for $47 a month. And the impact was devastating. Directly from a U.S. Senate. This is my great grandmother. You think I'm about to follow some woman somewhere? everybody tapping in with me shout out to all the regular regulars up in here um hope you guys had a great week i hope you guys are going to have a great weekend i'm chilling out i'm up in lake tahoe right now with the family chilling and um lake tahoe this is like nevada northern california i was thinking about going up there to the capital of Sacramento tomorrow. I'm trying to work my schedule around. I don't know if I can make it up there because a lot of people are going up there tomorrow to holler at them about the reparations bill that they're kind of playing games with. Um, we had a lot of people calling up there, making a, a lot of noise. So they've been trying to kick the reparations bill, kick that can down the road and stall. And we're trying to hold them to task on that so tomorrow people still need to make calls if you are in california try to make it up there i'm going to see what i can do to get up there because i'm about two hours away from sacramento but i got the entire family and we got a lot of stuff going on because we're in the middle of a vacation but this whole thing came up with the um, california reparations task force they're trying to pull a bait and switch they're trying to put some language in the bill that would say study they're trying to hr 40 it and we're like no we're not going to do that um they're really trying to do some some stall tactic stuff and they're getting their negro flunkies to try to do it so we're, we're looking at everybody and we're calling them out and we're staying on top of it so we need people to really keep eyes on what they're trying to do out here in california with the reparations bill because we've been working very hard to get the language right and get things passed on certain levels and um you got people playing little games here so we're going to keep our eyes on it um other than that um if they are playing games with our reparations man we're going to be like hey man we the democratic party we should abandon them altogether for playing games like this, especially out here in California, where these people are giving our tax dollars to damn non-citizens. But when it comes to our money that is owed to us, now they want to play these little janky games. And these are the Democrats doing it. See, we got to really hold the Democrats to task. And a lot of people, what they try to do when we criticize the Democrats they try to play this deflection game where the Republicans, they ain't going to give y'all no reparation. The Republicans ain't going to do it. If anybody going to do it, it's the Democrats. Well, the damn, we've been voting for the damn Democrats for the last 60 years 
damn near exclusively. So they owe. We've been sitting here under this benign neglect program under the Democrats. So yes, we are really holding the Democrats to the fire because they owe and they should be stumping for our reparations more than anybody as much as we supported the Democrats over the decades. They've been sitting here just saying, yeah, just just wait a little longer. Your day is coming. Just keep on waiting. I know we ain't going to give you nothing now. We got to prioritize these immigrants now. Just keep on waiting. We got not this year. We got to prioritize the um, LGBT. Just, just keep on waiting. Uh, we, we can't do it this time. We got the, the Jews and the Native Americans. We got to prioritize them. Y'all just keep on waiting. We, gonna, we, we, we got you. We ain't forgot about you. Oh, we can't do it now. We got to stop the Asian hate thing going, so we got to prioritize the Asians. You know, they've been playing that game just nonstop. It's a plethora of kicking the can down the road. And when do we say, hey, man, enough is a damn enough. Hey, we've been supporting all of your policies for all of these years. You owe us. The Democrats owe us. That's why we're really bringing it to them. I don't want to hear about, well, the Trump ain't going to do, the, the Republicans ain't going to do nothing. No, no, no. That's not the answer. Because, yeah, if we wanted to, we can start establishing a relationship with the Republicans. But the Democrats, we have a long standing relationship with them. And they owe. And we have to not be afraid to say, hey, man, y'all need to break bread. We're not going to play these games. And these shaming tactics are not going to work. These people are still trying to run these shaming tactics on us. Um, speaking of shaming tactics, you know, they've been getting these D-list celebs or these falling off celebs to try to use their shaming tactics on us like Uncle Lizard Luke. And Uncle Lizard has blocked me. I just noticed tonight, right before I went live, Uncle Lizard has me blocked on Twitter now. That's interesting. I, uh, he he brought all the heat to himself. I didn't do any. I, I clowned him and responded to his randomly attacking me. I guess the DNC gave him some talking points to attack me. I lit him up you know, on my YouTube channel. I've never really at him. I don't tweet at him. But so many people got on his bumper. He tried to attack me and he didn't realize all the support that I got. So people start lighting his ass up. They start bringing up his domestic, alleged domestic violence. And people start pulling up all the videos and clips and articles of his, his daughter talking about abuse and other people who work with him talking about abuse. And they start finding his son running around out there in Florida that he damn near, I think he might have disowned his son. His son's out there doing a gang of crime, Luther Campbell Jr., so people are pulling up his damn resume and his track record and pulling up the receipts on them. You know? The day of these tethers just running amok around us and just talking greasy, those days are over. He didn't expect the backlash, so he blocked me. And, you know, he's just lying and lying on Minister Farrakhan and trying to bring Farrakhan into his foolery. So, very interesting. He's going to block me. I didn't. Hey, you brought the heat to yourself, brother. Uncle Lizard, you brought it to yourself. Trying to stump for Kamami. And it's it's funny. People are low key. There's a couple of people trying to explain for Kamala Harris in that crap show interview she did with CNN. Let's, let's be real. Do we have any Kamala supporters, any Democrats in here? Let's just be real. That woman crapped her pants on that CNN interview. That was a train wreck, and they're trying to find a way to spin that. That CNN interview that Kamala Harris did was a travesty and a train wreck, and they know it. They know it was a train wreck. The woman was sitting up there. She couldn't even sit up there by herself. She needed Tim Wall sitting up there with her as a support animal. And even with the questions asked and the the questions were primarily softball questions. She was still bumbling softball questions in a pre-recorded interview. I heard that the, the whole interview was like, 
it's really 40 minutes, but they only showed 18 minutes of it. I wonder what was cut out. So this woman, and she was looking drunk and just out of it. Something's off with Kamala. Let's just be real. Something's off with her. Something is very off with Kamala. That woman ain't fit to lead nothing. Let's just be honest. Nobody's hating. To, she, something's off with her. And again, she was selected by them. The public didn't select Kamala Harris. The public didn't select her. There was no primary where people got to decide. They said, hey, this is going to be the de the Democrat running person. And you better support, especially if you're black. Like, what? Notice that gaslighting thing. And I, I just saw another video. There's another video of her. Have y'all seen the new video? There's, you know, I, we, we've already seen the video of her talking about making greens. And now there's a new one. There's a new video where she's talking and it's clearly set up. They didn't set up. It's not even an interview. She's um, talking to some black lady. And Kamala is explaining to her how she make her greens. And it sounds so forced and contrived. You know, you know, I make my greens. You know, I wash them in a tub, okay? Then I put white vinegar on them, okay? Then, you know, I put some pork fat in there and just let that simmer a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then I put some Tabasco sauce in there, okay? But I have to, I make so many, I have to soak them in the tub. I'm not lying, I soak them in the tub. Oh, God, God, God. Woman, if you don't make you some damn biryani chicken and sit the fuck down and get out of our damn face, man. I'm so sick of her cosplaying us with these janky ass recipes that don't even sound right. I'm so sick of it, dude. I'm so sick of it. I'm tired, man. And they're telling us we ain't really black if we don't support that. Come on, man. We look, we Foundation of Black Americans, we're sitting out here just minding our damn business. We're just minding our business, not saying nothing to nobody. We're just going to work and drinking our Kool-Aid and seasoning our gizzards. That's what that we're just doing what we do. And then all of a sudden they pop up, hey, black people, if y'all don't support Kamala, y'all hate black women. Huh? That's not a foundational black American woman. Oh damn, why does it matter? Why why that even matter? Nigga, you the one who came over here to us. They killed me with that gaslighting. Y'all come to us unsolicited. We didn't say nothing to you. We're here minding our business. Y'all come over here to us yelling at us about how black Kamala is and how we ain't shit if we don't support her. And we're like, well, she ain't. Is she really black? Oh, damn. What you mean? Uh, blackness got rules? What y'all talking about? Y'all sound like the white man. Is y'all niggas MAGA? Is you MAGA? If you MAGA, just say you MAGA. I'm like, well, calm, calm down, Democrat Shield. You came over here to me with all of the gaslighting. And then when we are not going along with your program, then... Y'all try to use shaming tactics on us. Y'all go to hell. All of you Democrat ops, go to hell. We don't owe none of y'all nothing. We're the only group they come at like that. They don't come at no other groups like that. They don't talk to any other groups like that. They don't gaslight other groups like that. They only pull that nonsense with us. And they can kiss my ass with all that. I'm good. Oh, what's, what's his brother name? Fantastic. Let's get on here, Fantastic. Oh, Fanatic. Okay. What's up, Fanatic? Uh, brother, what's going on with your phone? All right, Mr. Fanatic. Something is happening with this brother's phone. I don't know what's going on with him. Oh my god. You alright, man? Freak. Brother, you alright? Is this nigga in the middle of doing an OnlyFans video for Andrew Gillum or something? What you trying to do, bro? 
I mean, you, you can't multitask, brother. You got to tell Andrew Gillum you're going to send him that video in 30 minutes, brother. And put your leg down. All right. This nigga taking pictures of his gooch and sending that shit to the to Roland and them. And I'm going to call back when you get through taking pictures, brother. What's wrong with you? All right. <laughs> Let's get some more people in here. Good Lord. Don't call when you're trying to make you a little change, brother. Get your money. Make the money. Don't let the money make you. Let's get King Law in here. King Law. And then we're going to get um, Pac-Man set. King Law, what's up, brother? What's going on, Tariq? How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? What's on your I'm mind? I'm all right. Hey, look, you was talking about the new video of uh, Kamala with the, I don't know if it's Kamala or Kamala, but where she was talking about the uh, um, uh, collard greens. Did you see the black yeah. dude, man, that was standing beside her? He, he started jumping up and down when it was like, did you use bacon or did you use turkey? And then, you know, he started jumping up and down. Did you see that part? I didn't I didn't catch that. I was so... I, I I just got so disgusted I had to turn it off when she was talking when she was talking about Tabasco and uh, oh god I, I I just couldn't I just couldn't it was too cringy I got to see the whole thing right right and I got one other question um I've been noticing that they've been showing a whole lot of um, immigrants you know taking over uh, apartment complex in Denver stuff going on in Chicago is that a propaganda? Or is it actually really happening? Is they trying to boost the uh, Democrats or Republican? That's my last question. Thank you, brother. And from what I'm understanding, I'm think it's I think it's really happening out there. And I'm like, why isn't the police doing something? Because I'm hearing from people on the ground out there, and I think it's in Aurora, Illinois, not Aurora, Illinois, but um, Colorado. I think, but it's out there near Denver. It's something like it's out there in Colorado. But I'm I'm seeing a lot of people who's out there on the ground saying, "Hey, this is a real thing. These village Venezuelan gangs are out here running these apartment complexes." Now the police, they've been kind of explaining. They're like, "Yeah, there's something going on. It's not as severe as certain reports are making it to be," but they're being vague. The police is being real vague, and. Something is something is happening out there. It's something definitely happening with them Venezuelan gangs. Something is happening. Okay? And I've seen videos of them cats running around apartment complexes with all types of guns and choppers and sticks. And I'm like, damn, something is happening. And what's interesting, law enforcement ain't really stepping up and doing anything. The mainstream media has been low-key quiet about it. The most that we've been seeing about this is stuff that's online. So there must be some kind of word from the top telling the mainstream media not to jump on it like that. But something is going on out there. And let me tell you something. If it was black gangs taking over an apartment complex, boy, the RICO charges would be insane. The RICO charges would be through the damn roof. Pack, what's up, man? Pack? What's going on, uh, Tariq? Um... Well, I'm being uh, sincere here. Um, I'm not a troll or anything, but I'd really like to kind of pick your brain and discuss a hypothetical uh, reparations package. That's okay. There. Got it. Now let me now before we do that, and that's great. We can do that. Now, where are you from? Where are you from uh, originally? Uh, I'm born here. I was, uh, you know, my parents are immigrants, but uh, where are they from? Uh, Eastern Europe, the uh, Balkans. Balkans. Uh, yeah. Kind of Serbia. about Romania, kind of about Romania, kind of? Uh, Serbia, Serbia, around Serbia. that Got area. It. I live Got in Ohio. Um, okay. But, cool. yeah, so I'm not a troll. I'm being sincere. Like I said, I just really kind of want to pick your brain. Um, I think it's a really engaging discussion. But I guess my first question in this negotiation would be, Mr. Tariq, uh, how much money are we talking about exactly uh, 20 trillion dollars okay that's fair yeah. right. um now we you know in this hypothetical scenario i'm you know in a position of leadership and i don't have 20 trillion dollars right now now i do have a pit printing press 
but printing that much money will just cause too much inflation and so forth. Would you be okay with, let's say, a 10, 15, 20 year uh, payment installation package where we, uh, you know, dish out the reparations, uh, not in a lump sum, but in a series of payments over a number of years? Um, no, because did they do that with some of your fellow Eastern Europeans, the Ukrainians? They gave money to the Ukraine. They gave billions to the Ukraines immediately. They didn't do it in a an installment plan. They gave it to your fellow Euro, um, Eastern Europeans. They're not even citizens. And no, nobody balked at that. Did you have a problem with that? Oh, actually, I did. Um, but, nobody, but not enough to do anything about it, though. It's, they still got the money. It's, got it? 20 trillions, it's, it's a little bit up there, but that's okay. But he, he, here's the thing, but here's the thing. See, that the billions that they sent to the Ukraine, that doesn't help us. That doesn't help our economy. That hurt our economy. $20 trillion to foundational black Americans, that will boost the economy because we're not foreigners. The money will be spent here that money is going to circulate within the economy. It's not going to hurt it. So that will bolster, bolster the economy. That's going to help us create the businesses that we need. So us getting our reparations package will be the thing that saves the economy in the United States. But go ahead. Well, I can, I can see that. And I do got a few other questions. But just on that point, would yeah. you, if, if let's say, you know, we just don't have the $20 trillion on but hand. we do. We do. We got it. This country has it. Would you be open to any kind of acceptance of a payment package through a number of years? Or is that completely out the window? No, because they've been saying that for years and kicking that can down the road. It's time to pay now. Okay. It's time to give us what we're supposed to get now. When we were, when our families were enslaved, they didn't get 20 year payment plans they were getting all the wealth and resources out of the free labor of my family right then and there they were exploiting their free labor and building the wealth of this country right then and there in real time they didn't take plans it wasn't in installments all of the resources were taken from them and used to build this economy so they're going to have to pay us back because it's a debt that's owed it, we're owed this. This is not no handout. This is not a gift. This is not a grant. This is something that we as foundational black Americans are owed. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, my second question is regarding who exactly you know, would get reparations. Is it uh, you know, anybody that is black? Uh, nope, or, nope, nope. Or, it's not a race. Uh, no, 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 no. It won't. I'm telling you, no. It's a lineage based package. It's lineage based. So it's going to go to the descendants of freedmen. All right. It's not going to be race based. It's going to be lineage based. And there's a group of people, foundational black Americans, descendants of freedmen. We were the ones who are qualified for the reparations. That's all. That's all it's going to. Um, when people try to do the, hey, let's give it all to black people, no matter where they're from, that's not going to work. We're not co-signing that at all because other groups came over here later. They were not a part of the slave trade or anything like that. So they're not qualified, nor do they deserve to get reparations for slavery in America. So it's for the descendants of freedmen. Yes, now, go ahead. What, what, what about, like, let's say elderly folks under deathbed? that are a few days away from dying for 10 year olds or, you know, babies um, who really won't be able to do much with that reparations. Um, you know, do they get it as well? Um, and if they do, you know, who does it go to after, uh, you know, if they pass away, you know, a few days later or, you know, like a child, like, you know, does, does, do the parents hold on to it or is it put into like a, specific trust fund when they turn 18 then they can tap into it how would yeah, that work just like any of any level of wealth or any level of resources just like your money now same thing like your money now whatever if you work a job and you have a savings account if you die the your next of kin or your spouse that money goes to them yeah same thing the same thing this is going to be our money we can do whatever we want to it or do whatever we want with it rather so yeah if there's a 
a kid who gets the reparations check and the parents will definitely manage that and put it in a trust fund or whatever and if there's somebody who got a reparations check and you're like the people in um tulsa oklahoma they're like in their 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 centurions they're like 104 years old and they were trying to get reparations um for what happened in tulsa oklahoma they're playing games with them as far as that but yeah um just, just remember i'm in a pathetical leadership position so if i give out reparations here you know black people are part of the economy they work they you know they contribute if i give out reparations i'm kind of concerned that the next day uh, black people are going to just quit their job and that could cause a possible disruption in the economy you know my personal life i hate when people quit or you know call off and you know i could see a scenario where you know the economy maybe in the long term would benefit but in the short term it could cause you know a serious problem where black people say well look we got a reparation and quite frankly we have our own you know ideas of what to do with it but i don't really feel like going into work the next day uh you know is there anything we can do to minimize that that economic uh impact well, the thing is, you guys are doing that. You're doing something about that now. Black people are trying to get jobs, and you guys are bringing over illegal immigrants to train them for jobs that we're supposed to be getting. That's what the whole black jobs thing was with Trump and the um yeah and the National Black Journalism um, Organization. Yeah, so they're giving jobs away to other groups anyway, and we're sitting up here jobless and homeless. So, yeah, we're already suffering and we don't even have the reparations checks. So I, I that's why we need them. That's why we need them because of us being um, um, screwed out of jobs and screwed out of resources and so many homeless black people out here. Yet they're bringing over illegal immigrants and giving them damn near free housing. So, yeah, we, we going to need them reparations. I just got two more quick questions. To read. Um, Go ahead. Uh, the fourth one is if I give out these reparations. Mm -hmm. Um, There may be white people who will feel that, well, black people got reparations. I don't have to have white guilt no more. I don't have to, you know, think of white privilege. I don't have to pretend to like black people anymore. Do you think that that could cause more racism uh, in the long run, uh, which would not be beneficial for both sides um where, where white people feel like you know we don't we can now be openly racist i guess you could right say. right so if the thought of black people getting a debt that's owed and something that's just makes them want to express more open racism well that's more justification for reparations because if you're harboring that kind of hate we should have gotten our checks a long time ago because we're not going to be able to survive with the undertones of that kind of hatred. That's why we're suffering now, because the undertones and the overtone of that hatred exists now. This is why we have economic deprivation, educational deprivation, medical deprivation, and deprivation all across the board because of that hatred that's already there. Just because they can contain it because we're so far on the bottom that's not a good thing. So us elevating and getting up off the bottom and getting a fair shake and an equitable shake in this society from something that's old, if that's going to make you spaz out and turn into a, a David Duke, well, that's a you problem. That's a problem that you've already had. And that further justifies why we needed reparations in the first place. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it does. Um, I, I just have one more quick question. Yes. And then I just want to make one final point and I'm, and I'm done. But my fifth question is, um, let's say I, we, you get reparations. And as you know, when millionaire, you know, when, when people get a large lump sum of money, particularly millionaires, they just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. with it. it doesn't matter where they, it doesn't matter who they are, or where they come from. It's, it's just a problem when people get a large sum of money. And are you concerned that maybe receiving that large of, of money at once could 
cause complications where maybe future generations of black people will possibly look back at your generation and say, you know, they got the reparations, but they really fumbled the bag. They really didn't do much to, you know, make our lives easier in the future. Um, did you see a scenario where you do get your reparations, but it doesn't go, you know, doesn't work out as well as you think it does? I don't know how it wouldn't work out. Um, it's something that's owed. If somebody owes you something and they give you what they owe you, um, you can work it out the way you want it to work out. See, we're the only people who they, there has to be caveats and um, disclaimers to our racism. I mean, to our reparations. Other groups, they don't have that. With Native Americans, um, the red ones, when they get reparations and monthly checks and casinos and tax-free status, nobody questions what they do with the money. And, and a lot of them are on reservations getting their drink on. And they let them drink. If there's some of us who want to go ahead and smoke weed with all the reparations money, let them smoke weed. If they want to buy rims, let them buy rims. If that were the case, if most black people were going to do that, the dominant society, they wouldn't have a problem with reparations. The problem that they have, they know with the resilience that we have as foundational black Americans, they understand when we get reparations, we're going to do phenomenal things with them because we do phenomenal things with the deprivation. We don't get anything and we still do phenomenal yeah. things. So you can only imagine the phenomenal things we're going to do when we get an equitable shake and a justice debt that's owed to us. So that's the real threat, but go ahead. Yeah. And, and that's what I was getting at. You know, what that, point I was trying to make was, you know, let's say I knew my parents were millionaires and, you know, they they, they screwed it up and now I'm, I'm poor. You know, I, I can't help but look at my parents and be like, man, you guys has kind of messed that up. But that's not my final point. My final point is this, uh, Tariq. I, I am being sincere. Yeah. I'm not a troll. I do believe that, you know, there there, there is an argument and room and a discussion to, you know, correct a wrong in the past uh, with reparations. I do believe in that. Uh, and the reason why I, I said I'm kind of picking your brain here, Tariq, is again, I'm, I'm being sincere in that I am sympathetic and I do believe in reparations, but it's got to be presented in a way where white people can also be accepting of it. And the reason why I say they also have to be accepting of it is because the more they are, the easier it will be to create a reparations package. It can't be one side is you know, 100% for it and the other side is 100% against it. And I'm just asking these questions to maybe you know flush out some things where when it is presented, it's something that white people can say, you know, I, I can accept that. Um, but one more thing I'd like to say. Uh, a, a good argument for reparations, and I think you kind of made this, Tariq, yeah. is that, um, you know, we spend money, you know, every year in the trillions. Um, it, the debt is so high, it's like, I don't, I don't even care anymore. It, it's like, if we can spend money on everything else, I think we can, you know, find money to spend uh, and and. Okay, now let me now let me ask you this. Now now yeah. let me ask you this. Yeah. Now, as a white person, what would be, in in your opinion, and you know white society, you know the people within your community, and you probably know a few white supremacists or suspected white supremacists who might harbor anti-black views or may not. What would be, in your opinion, an acceptable form of reparations that would make people in your community comfortable with black people getting them? What would be a, a a right scenario? What would be a correct and acceptable scenario? Well, I, w I would say for me personally, um, you know, like I said, I, we spend money on so many things and it's like, well, it, we're going to spend money, a few points I'm going to make it, we're going to spend money anyway. Uh, this can actually lead to something positive. And what I mean by that is or any country in the world, you don't want a group of people that are at a disadvantage. If we give reparations to black people, it will not just be beneficial to black people. 
it will also be beneficial to white people. Mm-hmm. Because if black America does better, that will be better off for everyone else. And something, something along those lines that don't take this as, uh, you know, some kind of, um, you know, this side, that side. I would kind of try to create an argument where, listen, white folks, this also will benefit you in, in, in certain ways. Um, you know, the economy will get better, let's say, for example, or, or, or you know, more businesses will prop up or, you know, it, it will heal a divide and it doesn't have to be looked at as a bad thing. I understand a lot of you know white people are kind of like, wait a minute, reparations, this or that. I would kind of frame the argument, Tariq, as to tell them, don't look at it this way. It's going to be a beneficial thing for everyone. And again, that's kind of where I'm at um, there is I want everybody to do better. I want all people to be better off. And, uh, you know, if I feel comfortable that a reparations package will benefit the country as a whole and that it will be a good thing, that's something I can accept. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm being sincere and I'm not going to take your time. Thank you for uh, giving me the time. Thank you so much. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. The last part he didn't really quite answer. Okay. I would like to know, and if we got any people who are in the dominant white society, I would like to know from your opinion, what would be an acceptable form of reparations to white society? Um, Abdul, brother Abdul, hop on. Tariq, what's good, brother? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? All right, I'm a long time listener, man. Melanoy 300 all day. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, that brother Darnell Scott, Daryl Scott, what's his name? Daryl Scott, yeah. Um, he was he was years ago back when Trump was president. He offered us some money when he was uh he was something jumped off in Chicago, and um Trump was like Trump um all them coons was around him, and Trump said, "What well, black people want money? I give them money." And them coons throw them off. So my suggestion to you is maybe you get like, maybe like, because you got to go up there yourself to talk to Trump. I don't think they trying to talk to Trump. Mm. You know what I mean? I think them coons is out all out for themselves. Mm. Well, yeah, you know, I would like to call Adam and see what's going on so we can see what we can put together. So, you know, so we're, we're working on it to see what we can do. Because, right. yeah, Trump going to have to talk to the grassroots, man. If Trump wants to really get it in, um, and again, I, I want to hear from people who, if they say they want to do something for the black community, I want them to step up and do something for the black community. It's not that hard to do. I want to hear about them black jobs. So yeah, I would love to sit down and, and chop it up with Trump. Um, that would be the move. All right, let me get some more folks in here. We got a lot of people in the building, ladies and gentlemen. We are in here heavy, doing what we do. Let me see. Let's get Fanatic, you back in here, man? Let's get Fanatic back in here. Fanatic, what's up, brother? All right, Fanatic. Okay, look, Fanatic, I don't know why you keep requesting to get up. And then you don't say nothing. And you got some, uh, I told you, man, do your OnlyFans stuff later, bro. Have you heard everywhere else? Tess, Tess, you can't hear me? I can hear you, brother. What's going on? Wow, I can't understand why that would happen. All right, look, so we've had conversations before. We've been on the same page a few times. Uh, lately, I think things have kind of changed pretty dramatically. Um, I think I don't know you, brother. I, I don't. I, I don't remember you. When did I talk to you before, sir? Just on your space on a few on a few occasions. Um, Were you using a different name or something? I don't remember. I you, used brother. the name Fanatic Forever. Um, okay, I, I don't remember talking to you, brother. But go it's ahead. It's okay. Um, what I would like to do is I would like to have a conversation about the electability of Trump and, and Kamala Harris and about what would be best for black folks. Um, okay. And uh, obviously... Uh, I'm assuming you're in a, you're a, you you're sound like a Kamala supporter, right? I've never been a Kamala supporter ever. I've been a very vocal, really? anti-Kamala person. However, oh, really? the problem that I'm seeing now is that I'm starting to see a lot of black leaders leaning towards Trump 
And I think we can criticize the Democrat Party. That's the only thing I've ever used my platform for has been to criticize the Democrat Party, um, specifically because I'm a black advocate. I advocate for for um, the progression of people of the lineage. And what I feel like is now I'm starting to see people what to support Trump. Uh, the first person I saw doing it quite a while ago was Marcel when Trump made the statement that, uh, what did he say? He said, black people, uh, that we built the country. Of course, he immediately followed that and said, I mean, we all built it, but you guys had a part. And so when he said that, people started like advocating and supporting Donald Trump. And of course, that was alarming to me because I think that Donald Trump is Mar obviously- but Marcel, is not, Marcel is not a Trump supporter though. That's, that's, we're going to be honest. Okay. Marcel is not a Trump supporter. He's not going to go out and vote for Trump. Okay. All right. So y'all got to stop doing that. If somebody criticizes Kamala, y'all say, well, you sound like MAGA. Because people try to say, I'm a Trump supporter. I'm, I'm not voting for anybody. I'm not supporting anybody. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not voting for anybody unless they have a black agenda, unless there's a package for us, something for us. And nobody has done that yet. So nobody can label me or anybody else a Trump supporter if we're not saying we're voting for Trump. But go ahead. Oh, listen, and I mean, we might be on similar pages, more similar than I thought. It sounded like I started looking at your platform and it felt like you were starting to, uh, you know, praise Trump for various things that I don't think that he deserved credit for. Um, it seemed like you were speaking somewhat positively of him. And of course, I do make a distinction between the idea of criticizing Kamala and supporting Donald Trump. I think that's where I stand. I obviously have always been incredibly critical of Kamala Harris. I think I'm, I'm from the state of California, as you are. So for me, I understand the damage that she's done. But no one would ever accuse me of speaking positively of Trump because I don't believe Trump has ever done anything positively for us. But it seems mm -hmm. like you've given him some credit on various occasions. And I think that's where I started running into some, pro into some problems. Like what? Like what have I given him credit for? I feel like I've heard you mention the First Step Act or something like that. Um, no. You never no. mentioned that? Um, no, I haven't, I haven't given nobody credit for no First Step Act. No, I haven't. You know what? Okay. So maybe 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 I'm, maybe I'm misconstruing something. What right. I would like to do is if I can, because uh, I'll just go through the content and find the, the, the things in particular that I disagreed with, because I do remember right. them. I, I didn't come prepared like to have a full on debate now. But what I was what I was going to ask you was, would you be willing to have that conversation? Would you be willing to have that debate? Well, we're, we're having no, no, we're talking now. You, you know, I don't have to you know make it all performative. We just we're just talking casually now, um, even with Trump. The only thing that I give him credit for, Trump didn't put any policies out to actually harm foundational black Americans as a group. I give him, I mean, yeah, that's as much credit as I can really give. But the, the Democrats and Kamala, these guys, Biden, they've actually put policies together that has kicked us in the ass. Oh, for sure. So that's the difference. Okay. So, you know, I agree with that. I, I, yeah. I, the reason why I say I almost want to re redo it is because, again, I didn't come prepared to have the conversation. And I feel like right now I can't pin you on these are the things that you said that have been pro Trump, that have given me the impression that you've supported Trump. This is what because what I've seen with a lot of FBA is it sounds like pro Trump rhetoric. I'm finding that a lot more frequently. And I've always said from the very beginning, you can be completely critical of the Democrat Party, but it doesn't mean that you become a Republican. Republicans have right. been staunch opposition to all progress for black folks. And when we talk about reparations and Donald Trump has at his rally, uh, Kennedy um, makes the statement. Um, Oh, they want the Democrats are pro crime. They want to give the uh, they want to give uh, the people who do the crime what you got. And he's talking about black people there. And he's saying that at a Trump rally. So then I would say that any person that is actually for black progress and understands the necessity of reparations in order to close the racial wealth gap, then we got to recognize that that's not going to come from Trump. It obviously isn't going to come from Kamala Harris as she made the statement. I'm not going to do anything that's only going to benefit black people. We get that. Um, I think that that's a problem. And then lastly, the idea about her blackness. I feel like that's something that it seems like people keep on um, having these dumb conversations about. Because the Democrats keep bringing it up. That's them. They keep gaslighting us. Just like I keep, I said earlier in this broadcast, we're sitting around here minding our business. Then all of a sudden, some Democrat shields pop up. Hey, black people, y'all must hate black women if y'all don't support Kamala Harris. I'm like, what? She ain't from our lineage. Oh, damn, what does it matter? Why y'all talking? Then it gets into a gaslighting thing. 
and that's them bringing it up. They do the same thing that Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade do. They parade their son around in a dress and like, hey, look at Zaria. Look at Zara. Look at our daughter. Look at our daughter, Zara. This is our daughter. Look at him. I'm like, okay, we got this boy in a dress. Oh, damn. Why don't y'all just leave him alone? Damn. Let him, let our daughter be with him. Well, you the one who came yelling at us about look at her, look at her, look at her. So they do the same thing with Kamala. They come around with her with these collard green recipes and all of this stupid ass shit. And then when we say, hey, man, that looks weird. Oh, damn. Y'all blackness, blackness can't be trivialized. Y'all sound like MAGA. It's a bunch of damn gaslighting. It's them doing that. We are talking about policies. What is this woman's policies? This woman has told us with her whole chest what she ain't going to do for black folks. But then they want to circle around and tell us that we owe her some type of black camaraderie. They can kiss all of our black asses sure. as far as I'm concerned. You feel me? I, I mean, I agree. I don't. I, OK, so then let me just ask this very succinctly. Do do you acknowledge that while she is obviously not ADOS, she is obviously not FBA, she is obviously not of the lineage, but she is indeed black? I don't even believe that, to be honest, because her dad, his his background is too damn mysterious and they're so damn vague about it. And then she becomes black um, when it's convenient during election time. There's no evidence that her father has ever identified as black. That woman has identified as Indian all of her life. When CNN did a story on her, they were talking about her going to India with her family and them uncles. They all sound like they work at 7 a damn 11. There's nothing black about her or her family. All of this collard green stuff, I don't know what that is. That's performative and that's cosplaying. And that dad has been very vague and mysterious and there's no proof that that man has ever identified as black. So, until we see some proof, and the proof is not her going to some damn HBCU. I don't know what that woman is, but I do know that she is East Indian, and there might be something else going on, but I know she ain't foundational black American. Okay. I So, and I think that's where I think a little bit of the issue is. I, I recognize, again, she's ab absolutely Indian. She went on, I think her name is Mindy Kaling, whoever the comedian person the actress chick oh. who went on her show talking about the curries and stuff and the diets and all of those things and talking about all these indian things when she got right. elected um as vice president um biden got on the stage and said this is the first um uh, indian american uh person to be elected to this whatever and so i i, I recognize that but I, I do know that she is from like even since san francisco she's identified also as black um but here's the pro here's, here's the main point though I don't think it's particularly important. It shouldn't have been. I feel like anytime that type of quote unquote gaslighting gets brought up, I think it's a simple solution. She's not of the lineage, but what the problem is, and I think, you know, you having the platform you do, you should be able to easily recognize that there's, there are plenty of your constituency that end up discrediting or dismissing the blackness, which I think becomes part of the conversation so that we can't even have realistic conversations about our policy. I can point out to you that the stuff that she's done that has been horrible, the stuff that came out of her office, and those should be the center of the conversation. But instead, Republicans keep on bringing up things about her blackness, as do Democrats, and as and the people of the F, the people who identify as FBA refuse to acknowledge on plenty of occasions the fact that her black Jamaican dad would be black. While I can understand he's not of the lineage, that doesn't mean that he's that not man, black. And it seems like there's an unwillingness to clarify that. No, no, no. That's conjecture. That man has never come out and identified as a black man. Never. And there's no documentation of that man being black. Jamaican is a nationality. It's not a race. You got there's a video now of an Asian woman talking about how jamaica don't mean african or black you got asians and indo jamaicans over there they have all types of color um um systems and um um color designations over there in jamaica and the caribbean so you have a lot of people in jamaica who don't identify as black that's a very common thing and i think her dad is one of those people they just try to use jamaica as a jedi mind trick to think that it's associated with black and it's not you have a lot of people over there who are not identified as black and i think kamala harris's family is one of them and her blackness um, is basically her going to a damn HBCU and that don't make you black. Rachel Dolezal went to an HBCU. So they try to finesse us 
to vote for her because they know she has no policy. She's already told us policy wise what she ain't going to do for us. So what they're trying to do, the Democrats are trying to gaslight us by saying that we owe her some kind of black camaraderie because she's the black auntie and she has collard greens and people twerking on stage with her and they can go to hell with that. I, you feel me? Last thing I'm going to say then, look, I, again, I think we have that agreement. Again, I don't, I'm not all about the performative nonsense when she was talking about, oh, I did this for Kwanzaa. I did all, I, none of that stuff mattered. All I listened to Tupac while I was in car. I, I don't care. I smoked weed and I inhaled it and then lock niggas up for that. I, I don't care about all that. But this is these are the facts. The 2006 panel of, of, uh, of a black lead, but for for black leaders, she referred to herself as African American. Then that was in 2006, right? I remember that. I saw that. And no, she was talking about African Americans are this and that, and we do that. And that. So yeah, she's playing to the crowd. Yeah, so she's kind of playing to the crowd. Sure. But and so she's referring to herself as African American in order to play to the crowd. And I, 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 her motives are always going to be sketchy to me because of what she's done with her positions of power. But the fact is, in that thing, she did say we when talking about African Americans. So she's referring to herself as an African American in 2006. Which she ain't. Which she ain't even that. That's why she's not a foundational Black. American. I agree. She's not a foundational Black American. But again, I. I there's African Americans who immigrated from Jamaica, right, or or from any other any other country in Africa, right, and those people would be African Americans while not being ADOS or foundational Black Americans or original Black Americans, whatever phrase you want to use. Like those people are not us, but they still are African American, and so uh, they still ain't us. I, I agree, right? they're not us, and that's and this is that's why we reject the term African American. See, that's why we ain't playing that African American game. That's why we have to pin things down because everybody can kind of slip in and out. You know, Elon Musk is African-American. Yes, he is. You, you understand? That's why we ain't with none of that. We've made the distinction. We draw on the line in the sand. We're foundational black Americans, man. And people who ain't from that lineage, we are not really looking at them as being our representatives unless they have a track record of really putting in work and standing 10 toes down on business when it comes to us and she's one of those people who has not done that okay so th this is and this is where i feel like this is not me trying to gaslight and this is not me trying to uh try and trying to play word games but it seems like every single time i've acknowledged from the very beginning that she's not of the lineage so she's not us i've said that from the very beginning but every right. time i try to establish that she is obviously identified as black it seems like you're running from that so in the 2006 no, because I don't give a damn. If you're not from our lineage, whatever kind of black you identify as, that's inconsequential. You're not from my lineage, so I don't really want you to be a representative of my lineage. Now, if you are a black Nigerian, you can be black as Akon, but go be black over there and represent your people. Go represent the East Indians and go represent Jamaicans. I'm not saying. Don't say you, right. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but then, so, but you can still be a black person and not be of our lineage. And that's the part that I'm trying to establish that you, that you refuse to acknowledge. Oh, yeah, can you I, can. Of course, yeah, you can. I believe that. Yeah, yeah. So there's black people. There's black people in Africa. Yeah. Okay, would that apply to her? Would she be a black person that's not of our lineage? No, no, because I don't believe that her dad is has identified as black. Her, her dad identified as a black Jamaican. Do I need to find history of that? Yes, you have to find the history. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. There's no evidence that her father has ever identified as a black person. Zero. On their census None. records, would they have identified as black? On, no, on his birth, on the birth certificate of Kamala Harris, they have him listed as Jamaican. They don't have his race. And Judge Joe Brown talked about that. He said there was some kind of error that they made. Instead of putting his race, they put his nationality. Mm -hmm. His um, Kamala's mama, they put her race as Caucasian. Mm -hmm. Her mother's Caucasian on the on the um, birth certificate. Yeah, because she's Indian. Right. And a lot of Indians are classified as Caucasian. I don't believe that dad has ever classified himself as black. Okay. Ever. So, but, 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 but we do know that she has classified herself as black. I don't see that. That's not even on her birth certificate. Not birth on her birth certificate, certificate but like we she, pointed out the 2006 she, interview. She, classify, she classifies herself as whatever's audience is in front of her. She's a damn East Indian. She's an Asian when it's convenient. And she's reluctantly black. 
because that new interview that she did on CNN, when they brought up the nationality and race thing, she sidetracked that. She don't like saying that. She don't ever. She's never said out of her mouth, hey, I'm a black person. She's never said that. I, but I just pointed out to you in 2006. No, no, when no, she no. Said no. She, when they were talking about African-Americans, she was like, yeah, you know, a lot of African-Americans do this and that. And we, we, she used the word we, but just. Eh, it was very vague. It was a very vague thing that she said, but she's never yeah. said, hey, I'm a black person. Let me quote it. Keep she black. said, what I suggest we do as African-American is own this issue in law as for, uh, enforcement and then define it in the way that works for us because it is a myth to say that Afri African-Americans don't want law enforcement. So in that point, she said we, and so the, she's obviously referring to herself as African-American. And that was some conditional ass stuff where she was kind of vague with it and kind of playing to the crowd. You understand what I'm saying? What's vague about saying we as African American? Tariq, can I please ask him a question? I don't want go to ahead. Ahead. go ahead. Fanatic, what makes her black? What makes her black? I would say, well, I mean, you know, the the fact that you know, if she had a a, a black dad from Jamaica, what makes her? What, I'm answering no, the question. What her, I'm answering the question. What would make her father black? I would probably say, you know, the, the same thing that makes anyone else black, like when it comes to just the, the look of your skin, probably meaning that you'd like you long term Im uh, immigrated from Africa. You were either a slave brought okay, to a so place from logic, Africa or something like that. By, by that logic, then there's dark skinned Asians and dark skinned Indians. Does that make them black as well? No, I, I also mentioned about something coming by a lineage to Africa. That so those Indians don't have that lineage to Africa. Australian Aborigines don't have that lineage to Africa. You would need to be a descendant of Africa in order to be black. But in Africans order, in order, in order to, I, but Afri go ahead. Africans don't even identify as black. Black melanated people didn't even start identifying as black. They were immigrants in America until after after 1964. Okay. After the Immigration and Nationality Act. So you're wrong. Blackness I'm is sorry. not a skin color. But just because you're a, a, a dark skin or you have melanin in your skin, that does not make you a black person. That's not what blackness is. So again, what makes her black? What makes her father black? I'm because sorry. Jamaica, as Tariq said, Jamaica is not a a race. That is a that is a nationality. You can be born in Asia and be a Jamaican citizen. So by definition, you would be a Jamaican citizen. You're not a black person. Right. I'm not saying simply being Jamaican automatically makes you an African American. But you I, brought I'm, it. But you brought I'm it up. Sorry. You said her Jamaican, I'm sorry. If you would let if you would let me respond, I'm sorry. I'm not saying that being from Jamaica makes you an, makes you black or makes you an African American. I am very well aware of the cultural and ethnic distinctions within Jamaica and that there are obviously both Asian and white Jamaicans. Those people have always existed over there as well. So they have, were also enslaved at some points in times over there. So I'm aware of that history. So I wouldn't make that that statement. What I did say was that her dad was a black Jamaican. What I did say was was that what if they were black Jamaican. You, what, what I did say right. what I did say what was, is where's the black if you were to look at their census it would also say that. And what I would say a black where's the proof? okay and what I would say what is a there are two different questions coming at me so let me answer one question at a time okay. the first question that you asked was um what what is a black jamaican a black jamaican would be a jamaican person who was a descendant from africa that's what okay, makes a black so jamaican Musk is, uh, you can be a white person and be a descendant of africa you realize I'm sorry. Right? Yeah, yeah you are right africa are not are not black people you can be african and be from uh, from somewhere else yeah, you're right. Okay, so let me okay, make sure. Okay, then. Sure. So your, lo your your logic and your reasoning is not making sense here, buddy. No, I'm sorry. You, you, I'm sorry. What you did was you pointed out a very specific nuance and distinction, and I will acknowledge your it's nuance. Not, it's I'm sorry. I will acknowledge your nuance and distinction. So what you have are you That's have the continent. You, so you have Middle Eastern North Africans, and those people aren't necessarily Negroes. And then you have the people no, they're in not, South no, Africa. No, and then you have and then and then and then and then and then it feels it's the word that we're using. It seems like you're uncomfortable with my answers because you're interrupting every time I'm giving them. No, so you're you also have, sense, so I am making sense, but it's, if, you will allow, go ahead. if you will allow me to finish my statement, you'll build see it makes ditch. perfect sense. Okay, thank you. I'll build the ditch and then afterwards, then you point it out to me. Thank you. So what I was pointing oh, out is good. there are, okay, thank you. So there are Middle Eastern North African people who we would obviously see that those people are not black right they are not negroes they actually have the same ancestry and some of the same dna the genealogy of people from the middle east right um now then you also have people in south africa those people are obviously descended from europe which is why they are also not negroes they are white so then you have those people but when you have the sub-saharan africans that are all negroes right and i'm using that word negro now because i'm obviously talking about a specific distinction within africa because obviously the more you zoom and the more you point out nuance and distinction and you're going to find some sort of discrepancies. So in this case, now I'm using the phrase Negro, which is interchangeable with Black, which specifically refers to darker-skinned people from the continent 
continent of Africa. And I'm saying that those people were the ones who were enslaved and brought around to the United States, to Jamaica and to the Caribbean, et cetera. And there were some of them over in, 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 in Middle East. And I'm saying that those Negroes, a, AKA black people, the descendants of those Negroes are the people that would be black. So if you're a Jamaican that descended from the sub-Saharan Negroes in Africa, you would also be black. If you're a, if you're a, um, a, um, a, I don't know, a Dominican who descended from the sub-Saharan Negroes in Africa, then you would be black. Now, of course, we have a very distinct lineage of ADOS people within the United States of America or, or, or FBA or original black American or whatever phrase you want to, the descendants of the lineage that were enslaved in America. And they are a distinct group of people. That is a distinct lineage. But the, overall, all people who descended from the Negroes in Africa are black. Tariq, I'll land my plane after this. Those okay. people did not start identifying with under the umbrella term of blackness until after 1964. Those people that you're talking about identify with their nationalities and they identify with their tribes that they come from. An East African quick to tell you that they're not black. A Nigerian is quick to tell you that they're they, they, they not black. A Caribbean is quick to tell you they're not black. Blackness is not just your skin color. By your by the, the definition I brought with, with the, by the point that I brought up, which you agree with, skin color does not make you black. Because by that logic, an Asian person is, is black as well. And then y'all like to use a, well, we all from Africa anyway, theory. So by that logic, and that means if er, if everybody from Africa, then I mean everybody black. So your point isn't making no sense. I'll land my plane there. Appreciate you, Tariq. Thank you, brother. Tariq, if I could respond to that really quickly. Go ahead. So first off, I, I never made this the stupid statement that, oh, well, we all came from Africa. Obviously, we know that some people came from the Caucasus Mountains, etc. So I'm, I'm not making that statement, and I would like to be beholden to my own words. Furthermore, it doesn't matter if other people identified with the racial uh, racial paradigm, which was created in the United States. So yes, I could obviously understand that people in Africa probably weren't using the phrase Negro or black because those people weren't identifying with the racial uh, paradigm. In the same sense that when you look at some like like uh, half of the names that were that happened over in Africa weren't even created by the Africans themselves. They were literally European colonizers giving them the name of Nigeria and, and Malawi, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So ultimately, sure, maybe they didn't identify it as that. But what we can point out to is the fact that when it came to the U.S. Census, you had to put black on your census because when they asked you for your race, you qualified as that. This is the same reason why we recognize that Jews are white. The same reason why we recognize that that Muslims and Arab people that I mean, I'm sorry, not Muslims, but Arab people are white. There's the reason why we recognize that Latinos are white. The reason why we can see that is because that's what they put on their census because they all fought for that whiteness. Blackness and anti-blackness has been always universal. Has always been global. So I understand that maybe they didn't want to use the phrase black and that's why we have people saying stuff like i'm not black i'm dominican it doesn't change the fact that we look at your skin tone we know you descended from those people that were enslaved from africa and we know ultimately that when it comes down to your senses that the, that the vast majority of them the darker skin ones are going to be putting black and we know what, what their lineage was no but a lot of them don't see that's the thing a lot of people go out of their way to, to deny blackness and they'll go out of their way to say well i'm not black i'm jamaican i'm not black i'm nigerian i'm not black i'm somalian we get the somalis who call us up all the time sounding like white supremacists because they classified themselves as Caucasian on paper, just like Kamala's mama classified herself as Caucasian on paper. And there's a mindset that comes with that. And we don't have a shared camaraderie with that. That's why her dad, I don't see, I've never seen any paperwork of that man identifying as black. And I can almost guarantee that it doesn't exist because if it did, the Democrats would have brought it out already. And another thing, Kamala Harris is a pathological liar. And that's another thing we have to keep in mind. That woman lies her ass off. She lies about everything. This woman, they're calling her out about lying about working for McDonald's. McDonald's called her ass out on that. This woman lied about listening to Tupac in the 80s when she was in college. The Gen Xer said, hey, wait a minute. The math ain't math. And Tupac didn't have no album out in the 80s. So this woman, it's not past her to lie through her damn teeth. So if she's going to lie about little small mundane things yes yeah, she'll lie and say we african americans we this we that so yeah we don't put anything past her we just know she ain't from our lineage she ain't a foundational black american and whatever else she wants to lie about 
take that up with the other people you want to lie to because we ain't buying. Okay, but that's a movement of the goalpost because originally the statement was huh. that she needed to have she needed to have identified as being black. Now that we point out that she did identify as being black, although or, or, or African American, which of course we know that those cha- those phrases can be by most people interchangeable. We know that she identified as that. Now that we're pointing it out, it's now it's well, no, she's just a pathological liar, which I, I'm not even discrediting. I I don't trust right. this woman as far as I can throw her. So I'm not saying that she's not a liar. I'm saying simply that she did identify as black. And so I, I feel But she's not she's not from our lineage. Right? I agree. You, but I haven't no, I haven't argued that at all. But, so it's inconsequential if whatever blackness she tries to identify with, she ain't from our lineage. But, and she's not a, she should not be our representative. As she's already said, she's not going to do anything for our lineage. She's not going to do anything for us. Now see, we can agree on that. I, I'm not saying that she's a representative of us. I'm not here to right. endorse so Kamala. What does, Kamala. What does, so what does all that other stuff mean? That, that's my thing. Once we've identified that these people are not FBA, okay, go argue with your mama. That's what I tell them. Kamala can go... Go argue with them over there. You ain't from our lineage, so I'm not really trying to hear none of that stuff. And she's already told us what she's not going to do for us. So uh, game over for me. I don't want to hear nothing that she has to say as far as that. Sure, but just like Obama, just like with Obama, he's not from our lineage. He ran around talking about the, the first black president, first black president. And we see what he's done for black people. Not a damn thing, but sat up here and let us get slaughtered. So that woke us up to the importance of lineage having people who are part of the lineage be the representative because a lot of people who are not from our lineage they don't have any type of conscience when it comes to the neglect that they inflict on us and that's what the issue is i'm i'm all for wanting people of our lineage to be represented representatives of us because i do believe that they can have our best interests not always i mean i've had these conversations with jesse lee peterson he clearly doesn't have our best interests and you got that dude that was running for uh freaking governor in california who got washed the black dude i can't remember it. larry there we go larry elder who got washed and he obviously doesn't have our best interests so i mean it's not it's not something i take for granted but i do understand that yes people who are more um like who are of our lineage are more likely to identify and recognize the discrepancies and the disp- and disparities that have been created by policy. So I'm, I'm with that. I'm not saying that Kamala Harris has been out in, in our best interest. That's not what I'm saying. It feels to me though, that I have seen, I, I, it seems I've, I, I've seen positive uh, representations of who Trump is, right? And I don't see an equal um, pushing of the that Trump is as equal a liar. It does seem like more and more FBA people are identifying with Donald Trump and being willing to support Donald Trump and willing to vote for Donald Trump. I've advocated from the very beginning. And I can understand, I can understand why. Do you understand why? I can understand. That's what I was getting at from the very beginning. No, I do not understand why anyone of our lineage would side with the person who literally voiced out loud, the, I mean, I'm sorry, who had at his rally voiced out loud that he specifically didn't want um uh that 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 we don't deserve reparations and that we're not owed anything and that in calling us all criminals or uh i wouldn't want somebody supporting a man who did what he did with the central park five yes i understand oh yeah go ahead do do that central park five thing because they when they brought the central park five out to the dnc and had them throw shots at trump um that wasn't the move because the Central Park Five, they were put in jail because of the damn Democrats. It was the Democrats who locked them up. It was the Democrats who lied. That was a Democratic thing that happened to those guys. That was all under the Ed um, Ed Koch, I think that's his name, mm-hmm. Cuomo, the, uh, the governor mm-hmm. who was building all those prisons at the time. Yep. Lynn Feinstein, that was the woman, the prosecutor who actually unjustly put them in jail. She's the big Democratic donor. That was a Democratic movement putting the Central Park Five in jail. So for them to sit up here and try to point the finger, oh, it was really Trump. It was was Trump. See, I don't let the Democrats get away with that garbage because, see, the Democrats do a lot of dirt and throw a lot of rocks and then hide their hand and point it at the Republicans. And I don't let them get away with that. They're just as complicit.
So they could never, to me, use the whole Donald Trump put out an ad about the Central Park Five when it was the Democrats throwing those dudes under the bus. Okay, so just to be clear, I'm not a Democrat, and I'm able to point out what Donald Trump did because I'm not I'm not really interested in the what about is. I mean, I can equally hold both people accountable. I can easily recognize how the Democrats were absolutely the people who were in uh, responsible for uh, for basically railroading the central park five i can easily point that out so then you wouldn't hear me supporting cuomo you wouldn't hear me supporting Koch. you wouldn't hear me supporting the district attorney um who 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 tried to sue the person for making that movie uh when they see us and then ran right you wouldn't see me um like supporting those people but i would you would also not see me supporting the person who literally had put out the ad which also contributed towards the fervor that got those people um that allowed them to be railroaded oh, and maintained no, that position no. he has never walked it back no, to this day y'all not gonna blame that on Trump. no they're not gonna blame that I'm, on trump. wait hold on i'm not that, blaming everything else on trump i'm blaming no, specifically the ad on trump because he's responsible because he no, paid for the, it the, no but that that ad didn't put them in damn jail though. i said it i already said i'm sorry please don't misconstrue my words what i said was i said that it was the district attorney that's obviously responsible and the prosecutorial team that that is responsible i'm not discrediting that that was a democratic i said that, that. i agreed with that however and you know, no, no, brother, because at the time, the Democrats were on this whole tough on crime wave. Yep, started by Biden and Clinton. I agree. Right. But that, that, at the same time, Biden, or say around the same time, Biden started putting that crime bill together. Absolutely, which was disgusting. But again, right. they, the, they're not going to point no fingers at no I'm not asking man. them to. I'm a person of the lineage, and I'm specifically pointing out what Donald Trump did. Now, you can say they don't have a right. I can agree with you. The Democrats, the people who did the work, the, 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 the okay, those people, this, they don't have the right. I do. And this is another point, because I, I pointed out before, Donald Trump never put no policies. The key word is policies together to harm black people. Donald Trump has never did that. The only thing they can do is point out to an ad he put out, that's not a policy. The people who were putting the policies together against the Central Park Five and putting them in jail were the damn Democrats at that time. Okay, Okay. let's be very clear. That's what my argument is today. Policy-wise, the Democrats be kicking us in the damn ass. Trump has never put a policy to harm black people in large numbers. He just hasn't done that. I would say his that's tax what... reform absolutely harm, no, harm black no, people in no, large numbers but again no, but i think no, now you're moving the goalposts because again what i was talking about what i was talking about i wasn't talking about a policy what i was talking about okay that's a different conversation but it seems like you're moving from the point that i made at the beginning the point that i made first was specific hold on let me get say a lot of people raising their hand east side are you in here brother yeah man i'm in here man hey a couple things i wanted to point out real quick um First, you know, when a uh, Caucasian fellow was talking about reparations and everything, one of the main things I noticed is that everything is a questionnaire when it comes to us getting our reparations. You know, they don't question nobody else. It's, you know, intense about, you know what I'm saying, getting compensation. Another thing, if you notice, when they try to get us to back up, you know, the, you know, the pick size when it came to the war in Gaza, we didn't do that. So they moved on to the, uh, well, first it was Ukraine. You know the ukraine war we didn't back that play we also didn't back up uh the war in gaza now they say you know what i know what to get you negroes excited let's go ahead and switch candidates on this presidential election and throw this you know this so-called black woman now we're not backing that you know here come that hate and as far as what she said in 2006 think about when we were kids you know in school when they said we need to put on our thinking caps that was the teacher saying that she was not a student i'll land there there you go there you go exactly so yes. I'm, but again i'm not the democrats i'm pointing out what trump did with the ad i'm pointing out that trump has maintained to this day that he still believes that the central park five are guilty no. despite evidence that they are not That's he has not never walked policy. that back i didn't say it's a policy that's your talking okay. point. I never said All it was right. a policy. What I pointed out was that Donald Trump has displayed his racism by maintaining mm -hmm. the fact that he he's still holding the Central Park Five accountable for something that wasn't even done by black by, by, by a black person. It wasn't even them, mm -hmm. and he's still holding them accountable for that to this day. And so I'm pointing that out. And talking about what the Democrats did is a total non sequitur, and that's a whataboutism. I'm not talking about the Democrats, and I'm not a Democrat. I've never voted for a Democrat. No, no, no. Kamala and Biden and those guys having policies that harm us, that's not a whataboutism. 
You're not going to be able to point at Trump after you didn't put policies together to harm us, and they're harming us now. You're not going to point to some damn opinion that Trump had. That's his damn opinion. That didn't affect us. The policies that they have affect us, and that's what I'm concerned with. And Trump, that's the thing that bites them in the ass. They cannot point to a policy Trump put together to harm black people. But I'm not and them. That, why do you keep bringing up them? I'm talking about me and what that, I'm pointing out. That's why people... That's and that's why people and I'm I'm talking about general. I'm not talking because you just give you giving your personal opinion. I'm talking about generally, people cannot point to a policy Trump put together to harm black people. And this is why a lot of black people kind of warm up to Trump more so than Kamala. I it, it, you give me two minutes, I'll find you a policy that Donald Trump did that specifically harmed black people. No, it didn't. No, you can't find anything. Okay. And the, the fact that you need two minutes to find one, that's the point. You got to you find you like you said something about some taxes. No, no. Wait, hold on. So you're saying that's you're saying because I didn't you're saying because I don't have the policy on policy. hand right now that that means that it must be a problem. Right. That's not a policy that specifically harmed black people like some kind of tax. Credit. No, I didn't say it specifically that's, harmed black people. I'm, that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about po what Kamala and those guys are doing now. They're doing this this immigration is specifically kicking us in the ass from all angles. Sure. Right well, now. Okay. See, I feel like now we're we're being a little bit loose with our words here because while I can look at like Biden's crime bill and I obviously recognize how it disproportionately harmed black people, when I look at that, I can see what that did to us, right? But we also see that yes, there are some white people that also got hit by the three strikes law. There are some Latinos that also got hit by the three strike laws. So while it did disproportionately, it didn't exclusively. In the same way, I would point out that Donald Trump's tax plan didn't exclusively hurt black people but they absolutely disproportionately hurt black people how so well because obviously we understand that trickle-down economics has never been effective any any sane economist will tell you this and when you're giving all of these tax breaks to the riches and you're removing things like the child tax credits and, and things like that then obviously you understand why that would be harmful towards the more impoverished folks it would be obviously more harmful disproportionately to black people that that's too much of a reach that's it's a reach Wait, that's a well major reach. That didn't harm black people. So you're telling me that no economist would be able to point out that 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 the that the economic that, that, impact of Donald Trump's tra tax that, plan did not disproportionately that, hurt black people? No, it didn't. That that's too much of a reach. Okay, that's your opinion. I'm I'm sure that I'm that's right not, there. And we can look at the COVID disaster and we can see that the COVID yeah. disaster obviously disproportionately impacted black people. And the COVID disaster was clearly because obviously black people are hyper overrepresented within the service sector within this country, and obviously the people who are the service sector were more likely to be uh considered to have a so what job. policy that COVID is not a policy that was a disease that just popped up that's not a policy what are you talking well, about well yes but donald trump what donald trump did was he used the bully bu uh, the bully pulpit to decry the policies of the people who were trying to lock down who were trying to prevent this thing from spreading he was dismissing and denying the impact of what COVID was going to be for fear of it impacting the economy and so his blunder there is what negatively impacted black americans the most considering the fact that we were more overrepresented within the service sector which part of what i just said no, wasn't factual no, name the part no, that i said that wasn't factual everything because uh, because trump put them stimulus checks out there and that helped people i'm and that's what that's the, a different the, statement the, the, but what, what was what i said true though because i feel like you're not you're not addressing what i said why the democrats be trying to explain about the stimmy checks them donald trump stimulus checks popped out out there so yeah okay so the, we can talk about the donald trump stimulus checks and and the democrats and wait hold on I do not want to sit here and defend the Democrats here because that's what the, that's what's going to have to happen. But in reality, the Democrats yeah, were the ones that voted for the stimulus checks and the right. Republican voted against it. So even if you were going to give credit to Donald right. Trump for that, that was the Democrats whom I recognize no, were no, acting in our best interest. Donald Trump signed off on it. Donald Trump put them on out there. Those were the Donald Trump. Those stimulus checks had Donald Trump's name on it. All right. So because he had he, because he had his name on it, we're going to dismiss the fact that the Republicans voted against it yep. and that the Democrats wanted it. Um, yep. Because when the Republicans do something and the Democrats and it's somewhat constructive, the Democrats try to take credit. But when the Democrats can't do anything um, and we, we say, hey, we need something from the Democrats, they sit up here and say, well, it's damn is it the Republicans behind the scenes. They stopped us. We couldn't do it because of them. So they 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 um try to get credit and then deny credit they they are all over the place but it was donald trump sending out those damn stimulus checks and the republicans and the and the democrats have been trying to spin that for the last few years okay and they can't 
That's crazy. I mean, I feel like I said my piece on that. Let's talk about opportunity zones. Did those negatively impact black people? Opportunity zones were nothing burgers. They were nothing burgers, but what they did effectively was they allowed people benefits in investing into black neighborhoods, which of course ended up creating more gentrification and priced black people out of their homes. There are plenty of studies that have obviously proven that opportunity zones led to more gentrification, which obviously mostly hurt black people. Or is that a fact or not? Um, no, that's not really a fact because that's the Democrats. Man, most of those areas, those are liberal whites going into those areas. If we're going to go, there. oh, I agree. And then, and, the and then, black people are disproportionately gentrified by it. And that's because of the you get. That's the damn Democrats. Okay, you put it on. There. Okay, no, 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 no. I would put. I would put. I would put. You talked about policy. And so if I'm going to point to point the point the finger at anybody, the person who had the policy that allowed those liberals, those white liberals, as you were saying, to move there would be Donald Trump. He created the policy for the opportunity zone, which allowed them to invest there, which, of course, made white liberals move there, which ended up creating more displacement and gentrification in black neighborhoods. So if you if and so the problem, the fact that you would have to find some type of third generation harm to black people because of a policy shows that it's not really the policy you understand it has to be some type of third generation indirect harm that's done you understand the democrats are putting direct harm at is it's not third generation it's not secondary they are putting policies right now that directly knocks us in our ass and they know it you understand okay. so now it seems some, like you're moving the goalpost because you sequential so, some inconsequential gentrification because of a policy that um affected this group over here then it bounced around a couple of generations there no, generations that's, no, that's not the same thing Gen gener meaning generations meaning that it's a secondary um impact it doesn't directly impact anybody there's um consequential impacts of it that's what i'm saying so you're trying the fact that you got to reach like you say well uh, donald trump um stopped environmental um zones so people couldn't grow trees and now black people didn't have nowhere to oh, breathe man. okay that that's really what you're doing that's not that's what i'm doing what i'm talking you're about is real you're making these reaches mm -hmm that's so damn indirect okay. it's not it's it, you got to do all the fact that you got to do all of these twists and turns Twist and, turn. and reaches okay. in order to find that policies that trump had negatively impacted black people generations down the line after you twist and turn that kind of proves the point brother. okay so let me just make sure let me see if i'm making sure that i'm twisting and turning right. here so it sounds you, you, like you gotta the fact that you gotta go around mm -hmm. the world yep. in order around to the world let's see if i could be really direct real quick okay right. what the opportunity right. zone did it specifically provided an incentive for investing in black neighborhoods and then right. as the invest Okay. We're supposed that's to what help. we that's what we can claim but we obviously any person could have right. seen that that that, that that wasn't gonna happen and so then because okay i got you but hold, see i'm trying to be very direct and you're not allowing me to but, I'm, 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 but you got to put it all in context the opportunity zones was supposed to be in areas mm -hmm. where black people are mm -hmm. and they was going to give people opportunities to build businesses there that would help people in those communities okay so i got you so that was the, that's what he claimed the intention was I, although i think any right. sane economist would have told you that that would lead to gentrification so what it was was simply a policy that allowed for tax incentives to invest into these neighborhoods and of course we knew and as any sane person would have seen as soon as those investments started gentrification and displacement happened as always does how is that indirect and tell me where i'm reaching because, there. Gentr because gentrification was already damn happening it wasn't because of the opportunity zones. did opportunity because zones expand the gentrification the and displacement gentr the gentrification was already in damn place and that was under the democrats and it's the democrats that were putting the policies of gentrification in place and they were the ones gentrifying the community so you cannot put that on trump Y'all can't put all this that's stuff. That's so funny. Me. Okay. So, and then another thing that he did. Democrats, that's what I'm saying. The Democrats do all of this weird, wicked stuff. I'm not a Democrat, people. sir. It was, I'm, I'm just, but you're using Democrat talking. I'm point, not using a Democrat is, talking point. I'm using a talking point. Democrat. I'm using a talking point developed from a person who studied the information. Now, if it happens to be that there are, because, if, if, no, because, no, no, hold on, because what happens, y'all do. Y'all, I'm not a Democrat, you're using, sir. You're, you're 
interesting Democrat talking points where y'all blame Trump for everything. I'm not blaming Trump for everything. I can blame Trump Biden defender. for his crime bill. I can. I'm not. I'm not even a Trump defender. I'm not even. Well, a, you're I'm not a Trump. Well, you listen to me. I, when I point out to you how opportunity zones impact black people, and then you point out to his intention, but that that's a defense of Donald Trump when Donald Trump did something fit, foul to black because, people. That was because of liberals capitalizing and etching us out of a policy that was supposed to help us so do you have the, the, are, is there any evidence that the pro, that the that the majority of people who invested in opportunity zones were liberal at all is there any research that, su that suggests because that the neighborhood, when you look at these neighborhoods these are liberal white people who are gentrified do you have any evidence are there any studies yes. that prove me, that you go into these Republican white people ain't going into black neighborhoods like that. Okay. When you go to black neighborhoods and you see white people jogging around, that's the first sign of gentrification. Okay. I, I have a business in South Central LA. I know. We got we see white people jogging around all the time. These are not Republicans. Okay. These are white liberals. Right. They come around. Those are the ones who come around. They'll they'll hang out. They'll go to your, your establishments. They're very liberal. That's what makes them liberal. They're like, hey, I'll, let me see what the black got going on. all right so i mean I like I, I'll, I'll, I'll accept the anecdote the other thing that he did at that point was when it came towards hud obama had created some sort of um po some policies that literally fought against discrimination from black people moving to white neighborhoods and trump rolled those things back that would be another policy that harms black people what wait 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 what policy did Bar barack obama put together for black people no, i'm not saying it it, he put together an anti-discrimination policy. The reason why I would not say that it's for black That was for LGBT. Let's stop Wait, it, brother. No, it was about racial. Okay, no, 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 no. The policy was about racial bias. That's what That's what the policy was about. Dude, and they, I can almost guarantee it tacked on LGBT. Obama's whole thing was using racial animosity towards us to compare that to the LGBT community. That's why they have that James Byrd, Matthew Shepard stuff going on. Um, everything they have to tack it on to us. So they'll put a policy together talking about, well, discrimination is bad for all people, including LGBT. So I can almost guarantee that was some kind of LGBT policy you that they would put. You have no idea about the policy, but you're assured that it's about LGBTQ because and you're I wrong. Did, I, it had nothing to do with it. The the policy specifically said that if you were if you were receiving federal funding for any type of public housing, that you had to look for patterns of segregation or or or, 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 or discrimination. That's what that that's all that the policy said. Now you're making it about LGBTQ when the when the, the when the, when it was originally about racial bias. No, it didn't say right. No, no, no. That racial bias and other forms of discrimination, dude. I read all of Obama's Okay, policy. so racial bias and other forms of discrimination. So then obviously right. if Trump repeals that, if Trump repeals that, then obviously that's going to negatively impact black people. But go ahead and defend Trump on that one. You feel like that, that wasn't problematic at all? Because the thing is, it wasn't, Obama wasn't doing it for us. It, they wasn't doing it for us anyway. They were doing that for the LGBT community. Okay, That's why a lot of those policies that Obama put together, none of that stuff was really for us. That stuff didn't really benefit us. That was benefiting LGBT and immigrant groups, just like with the Voting Rights Act. They sat up here and say, well, black people, they're making it hard for black people to vote. You got to have an ID. And a lot of black people can't get to can't get no ID. Like We're scratching our heads like, what the hell are they talking about? All of us got IDs. It's not hard for us to get an ID. And they were saying that because they were really trying to get immigrants to vote without having a damn ID. You see, they try to use us as the Trojan horse to bring in other groups. And um, some of these other folks call that out. And I have no problem with them calling it out because this stuff is not meant for us anyway. OK, when Trump made the statement that he specifically wanted to uh, allow for immunity for police officers, he wanted to pass a law to allow yeah. for immunity for police officers. Now, we already obviously understand that qualified immunity already exists for police officers. So since qualified immunity already exists for police officers, then that means when Trump says that he wants to pass a law, uh, for, for immunity for officers that means he wants to expand it in some variety do you feel like that was an appropriate thing and do you feel like that was Obama next? hold on wait already. Obama, Obama. Do, do, um, just let me ask you the question ask the question do, Obama do you feel Obama. like do you feel like that that would be negatively impactful for black Americans Obama no, it's already here it's already here already he's just honest about it so hold on he's, he's he wants to expand it. it he wants to he's expand it how much can you expand it? Well, what he wants to do is he wants to. How much I, I, I'm explaining. 
I'm, I'm answering the question. The way you ex- hear okay, this. good. Yeah. So the way you would expand it right now, qualified immunity means that what right now that you have to be able to prove that you were acting within the com- within the capacity of your job description, and at that point, then you can have qualified immunity. That's the qualification. You have to been have been acting within the capacity of your job. Well, if you expand immunity, then I mean, what, what, what Trump just said is he wants to give total immunity, and then paralleled it towards like presidential immunity, saying that these people can't do their jobs because they don't have enough immunity so then that means the fact that he's saying he needs to pass something which you acknowledge is already here which would be qualified immunity means that he's talking about ex- an expansion he's talking about something else and so obviously okay. then that that's would be word sal- that's, that's word, word salad sal- okay let me say it succinctly let me say it succinctly then let me say it succinctly. no 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 because what you're doing is word salad word salad Come obama on, obama already explained Obama already set that president. Obama signed the blue law to protect police. That's why under Obama, under his administration, qualified immunity existed before Obama. Uh, that's what I'm saying. And so what do you mean that he? It. That's what I'm saying with the blue law. When, listen, I've been I was out in the streets during the Freddie Gray protest and Mike Brown and all of these things when black people were being slaughtered under Obama. Instead of giving us protection, instead of prosecuting some of these race soldiers and white supremacists, Obama prosecuted nobody. His administration didn't prosecute anybody. Instead, he signed the blue law that helped and protected more police. So they've already solidified that. That's why Biden and Kamala, they're not prosecuting race soldiers for harming us. And that George Floyd Policing Act, that's another can that they kick down the road that they won't even get passed. So they're already doing that whole thing sure. with community, sir. But anyway, thank thank you so much. Let me get some more calls. I've been on here on that. Thank you so much, brother. I, I, okay, because I'm not, the word salad is killing me. Oh, goodness. Jake, real hop on, Jake. God, what the word salad. Um, peace and blessings um, to you, Tariq. Shout out to you for um, helping our people fight this genocide ethnocide that right. we're going through and um gatekeeping our culture because you know uh we're we're the most exploited and we're we're the best creators. You yes. know um, this this individual right here is definitely uh he's all over the place and I've been looking through his timeline and he appeared to be a democratic show because he's coming with all the talking points and at the same time it seemed as if he he been studying us and been in our spaces and and tried to evolve himself to even speak to us as as long as he's spoken to us yeah, yeah. and i could tell through the words and the language that he used that he's been studying us. oh and, yeah. Um, yeah so you know it this this ain't about Trump, you, you spot on. Trump never uh, did any bills or passed any policies that hurted black people. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, since the 1800s, uh, uh, foreigners coming into this country always harmed black people from, yeah. from the uh, Irish to the Italians to the Jamaicans to the Africans to the Puerto Ricans. And, and now we're to this present day we're dealing with Latin America. So yeah. so that's that's definitely a problem. These yes, individuals indeed. gotta go. They gotta get up out of our neighborhoods. Um and uh anybody who's for the Democrats is an enemy to black Americans because the Democrats has shown and proven throughout the years that they're enemies to black Americans. I'm glad yep. that our people is finally waking up because if you look at even down to the Civil War, down to Jim Crow, down to getting our our fathers about our house, uh, it was always the Democrats that did things underhandedly. Malcolm X spoke on this a long time ago, how sneaky and conniving the Democrats are. you know. And then on top of that, when, when it comes to being conservative, not not a Republican, but just being conservative with the belief in God, moral values, and you know, and uh, you know, not the same sex relationships. And I mean, this this country is going to hell based on real. I got to land your plane because I got to get some more cars. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. And I now I, I want to make my point because a lot of people 
when it comes to um, Trump and Kamala. You know, people got valid points on both sides. Again, a lot of people are leaning, black people are leaning towards Trump and people are like, oh, the Central Park Five and all of that. Listen, and again, I'm, I'm for right now, I'm still voting for the couch for right now until I get a real policy that's going to make me say, hey, let me go over here to this side. I want a specific proactive because, OK, you're not doing anything to harm us, which is good. But I want something proactive. Give me something proactive to vote for. That's what I'm looking at. And. When we look at the candidates that we have, we got Kamala and we got Trump. Some people will say, well, both candidates are crap. Okay. Wouldn't argue with that. It's a valid point. We're going to get crap with either one, but there's levels to crap. <laughs> okay. Let's be very clear. If you say, hey, both candidates are shit. There's levels to shit. All right. I want y'all to understand what type of shit do you want? If we're going to get some shit, if listen, look at it like this. Sometimes you got to take a crap. Sometimes the crap is going to be a turd. And then sometimes it's going to be diarrhea. Trump is the turd and Kamala's diarrhea. All right. Look at it like that. Just a regular turd. It just, it plops down. Bam, it's right there. It's a big pile. You clean it up. It's pretty easy to clean up. Clean it up, wash it away. And, you know, the smell might be there a little bit. But, you know, smell goes away. You clean it up and dispose of it. But diarrhea, it just, it's all over the place. It's running. It's running down your leg. It's getting on your clothes. It's dripping. It's all over the toilet. Diarrhea leaves a mess. It leaves a huge mess. And that's what Kamala is. She's diarrhea. Kamala's a mess. You understand what I'm saying? And she's going to leave a mess. She's a train wreck. And that's going to be hard to clean up. You understand? Trump has already been off in office before. We, we, you know, we didn't really get too much. We didn't get nothing, but we didn't get harmed. You know, we got a big, we got a big dumping, but we, we didn't get harmed under Trump. Right now, under Kamala, we, we got diarrhea on our, on our clothes. Look at the immigration problem. Family, look at Chicago, New York, black folks complaining about these immigration situations. Colorado, these Immigrant gangs taking over apartment complexes. California, our tax dollars being given to immigrants for housing while they're crapping on our reparations. We're getting diarrhea right now. We're getting a whole wet, sloppy mess. You understand what I'm saying? Right now. Under Biden and Kamala. Let's keep it a buck. You yeah. know so there's levels to crap now. And I don't like voting for the lesser of two evils. That's why I'm saying I need to get a proactive policy. We need a proactive policy out here. Let me get Dr. Brenda. Let's get Dr. Brenda in the building. Miss Brenda, hop on. Dr. Brenda. May you turn your microphone on, ma'am. Dr. Brenda, you want to turn your microphone on? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. How are you, Dr. Brenda? Oh, how are you? Nice to finally uh, speak with you. What about the third parties? What are they offering? Let's stop there. Yeah, we would like to see what they're talking about. I know Jill Stein, I think she was talking about reparations, but I know my thing with her, the guy who was um, her running as her VP a couple of years ago. He's been on some 
pan African, all black folks need to get reparations around the world, that type of thing. And eh, that kind of threw me off. And um, Cornell West, um, I think he's talking about reparations. But yeah. then it, yes, he is. Yes, indeed. But I think it gets into a poor people thing um, that all poor people might need to get it. So I don't know the angle he's coming from. But I, And I love Cornell West, by the way. But um, so. Um, I don't know about the third party people. I don't know. I haven't seen one that really, really stepped up to the plate and said, hey, this is what we need to do to get tangibles for foundational black Americans. What's your thoughts on that, Dr. Brenda? Uh, I think Cornel West is on point about how wars, you know, even though they're external United States, how it just bleed over here into the United States, it's not just the immigrants. War does the same thing. Yeah. You know, and he's trying to come that angle, but he preached more about wars. But I like that angle. How is that being presented? I'm a Trump supporter. I'm a member of the Trump team, believe it or not. I'm a fisher, I'm a fisher wow. member of the Trump team. But okay. I think, you know, I think President Trump. Uh, has too much baggage right now to be president, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's too much. It's, it's, it's too much for the nation to handle all that and then all that uh, the presidency brings. And he has gotten older since he's been in office, too. Now, Carmel, the Harris, I, I just think that's just a joke in and of itself. Yeah. Now, I believe she is black. You know, I think she's black just because the skin tone of her father, but just her in general. Now, I interacted with her twice in my life. She got something done, but she just did that because she don't even remember the Trump team. See, that that that, that don't mm. pan out with me. I'm a, this is my second question that I want to ask you. In terms of reparations, can we go about it uh, getting chunks at a time, just like for the veterans, reparations for the veterans? You know, well, I, I, yeah, that's I different. The, well, that's, see, that's, that, that's the thing. It's, that's different from reparations for slavery. See, that, that is that is different. That is different. I understand that. But how likely is they going to give us reparations for all of us? Um, if we stand on business, it's going to be very likely. We got to stop letting these people intimidate us because we can get reparations. All we got to do is continue to stand on business. We can make these people do whatever we're supposed to get from them and make them give it up because this is money that's owed to us. We got to stop being scared when we get some pushback from these people. Um, that's something that's old. And when we talk about reparations, we can't let the word reparations be a catch all for well, reparations for veterans. We're vet reparations for people who um, had lead poisoning. No, no, no. Because they, they try to play with the word reparations. We're talking about reparations for slavery. Correct. Slavery for foundational black Americans. Now, if we want to do something for veterans, let's call that something else and make it something else. But when we're talking about reparations, we mean for slavery in America that happened to foundational black Americans and the descendants of freedmen. we got to be very specific with the language and not let them move the goalposts because they tried to do that in uh, one of those that place in Illinois. They were trying to say reparations with some kind of housing voucher where there was some kind of damn near lottery where they were going to give people some discounts on housing and call that reparations. no. See, when we start all that, well, I, I, let's make reparations free pit bulls for everybody. Okay, everybody need a pit bull. No, 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 no. We're not about to start redefining what reparations is. Reparations for slavery that happened to foundational black Americans. I'm going to be very clear about that. All right. Well, we got a lot of people in here. Shout out to everybody in the building. Hey, yo, by the way, the, the new album, um, grinding for a green card y'all can pre-order it right now on itunes how many y'all got itunes i know some of y'all got the samsungs um but go to itunes and type in grinding for a green card by my group flex troll um that album you can pre-order it now grinding for a green card people love the single the single is a box 
And actually, you can actually get the single on iTunes now. You can actually get the single. You can get that single and you can get Musty Tether on iTunes now. But the whole album, Grinding for a Green Card, pre-order it now on iTunes. If you have iTunes, just go to iTunes and type in Flex Tro or Grinding for a Green Card and you'll see the album. Just pre-order it. And the album is going to be out officially next week, but you pre-order it now. Got some bangers on it. We got hit songs like um, Musty Tether. Got a song called Bush Meat. Um, a song called Cake Soap Love. Um, got a song called Your Feet Are So Ashy. That's for the them Somali tethers. Um, or oh, one of my favorites, Forehead Forever. That's a beautiful song. Beautiful. Yeah, the, the songs are bangers. Um, <laughs> go look at the go look at the song list and we got a song called um, we got a little afro beats on this a song called cry to you niggas spelled n-e-e-g-a-s that's a nice little afro beats thing and the song that we did a couple of years ago the government that's on there too because a lot of people had been wanting that on the streaming platform so we got the government so it's, it's a banging album it's a banging album uh, we got another cut called Janky Hairline. Um, that one's a banger. Um, another dance track called Crooked Wig. Great songs on this album. Phenomenal songs on the album. But the Grinding for a Green Card, that's a banger. People really love that one. Um, and one of my favorites is Cake Soap Love. That's a nice little mellow track. Um... Cake Soap Love is <laughs> Cake Soap Love is beautiful. It's beautiful songs on there. So y'all got to go to iTunes and check that out. All right. Uh, let me get up out of here, man. Look, um, in a couple of weeks, we got an event at the Hidden History Museum. Um, we got the September Soul Saturday. Um, we're going to be vibing, networking. Y'all come on out and network and, and chop it up. Y'all need to be around like-minded people. We got great food, great drinks, and we're just going to be vibing. Uh, we we got to network more, man. It's very important that we get with like-minded people and brothers and sisters who are on the same page and just know who's who and who's where so we can vibe and network. I love networking with, with the family because we never know when we need somebody's services. I like to see people who's doing business, people who are into um, different careers so that when we need certain things, we can holler at you and, and, and utilize your services, man. And it's very important that we network so we can know who's who. I always meet very interesting people when we do our events. Always. You know, I, I meet people who are like private investigators and I know people who are caterers. We meet people who are doctors, people who are um, into real estate, uh, people who are interior decorators. Just so many things that we can utilize. We just need to know who's who and where you are. So I, I like having these events so that people can come down and we can just network and vibe. So y'all definitely need to come on out and chop it up so we can know who's who. And if we need each other, we know who to contact. So we got to start having more events. I'm, I'm going to start getting more proactive with that um, in the near future, just around the country where we network with each other and get like-minded people and business people. We're going to have to start having seminars and just really get this thing popping, man. Because um, when we have situations like we're having out here in California with them playing in our face about the reparations thing, we need to know who's who in the cities. We need to know who's who in the state. Some of the like-minded brothers and sisters who we can call up and say, hey, brother, uh, I met you at... Tariq's event. We going up here to the Capitol, man, to go holler at these politicians, man. We need you to roll through and we need you to call 10, 15, 20 more people to get them to call 10, 15, 20 more people so we can roll up here. We need that kind of energy, family. We need that kind of vibe. And, you know, we need people on the inside. That's another thing, because we do meet a lot of people when they come to our events. We got a lot of um, politicians. We even got judges who come to the events that we're cool with. So we need that type of thing. We need to continue that and make that a normal thing. 
that we have uh, brothers and sisters that we network with because it's very important to be around people man who's on a on a right vibe because the people you hang around man that's going to be a reflection of your mindset and a lot of times man it's hard to hang with people that's on the right page you're around your janky ass relatives. Let's just keep it a buck. Sometimes you're around your janky ass relatives, or you got some of your, your your childhood buddies who might not be on the same page that you are, but they're your childhood buddies. So they might be on some bullshit, and you might be on something different. But you need to be around, man. It's very important to be around a group of like minded people, um, people with their stuff together, people who are thinking progressively so that y'all can build you understand so we got to start building and just having it together so that's what i'm on now man i'm on just being around just like-minded people where we're growing that's why the delineation thing is very important that's why delineation is important. A lot of people are like, oh, dude, you niggas are divisive. No, no. And, and and when I say delineation, I don't mean just kind of kicking everybody who's not FBA to the curb. Because we got a lot of brothers and sisters who support what we do. And they are riders. And we still welcome you. you know, when we do our events, man, we got brothers and sisters from, you know, they come from all over. People from different backgrounds. And they're still supportive. Which is good. We want if you even if you're not FBA, if you still support empowerment and you're not trying to thwart what we got going on, come on down. If you want to be a real ally, come on down. Now some of these little old undercover secret tethers, stay your ass back. We don't want that. We don't want people coming around trying to sabotage what we do. Because I'm looking at some of these um these little um, coalitions that the state has assembled especially when it comes to this reparations thing out here. And we're looking at some of these names on some of these um, panels of people controlling what's going on with our reparations money. And some of these names ain't FBA. You see what I'm saying? Some of these names got a little Bammy and Goya powder on them, but they got melanated faces. That's why this whole thing where, well, Kamala, she might not be FBA, but she black. That ain't working. That ain't cutting it because you got people who ain't from our lineage, who's melanated, who's technically black, quote unquote, but they ain't from our lineage and they're not going to stomp down and make sure our lineage is getting the justice that we're supposed to get. So your blackness outside of foundation of black American lineage to me is inconsequential if you ain't really stomping the yard for us. For real, for real, that's inconsequential. And and Kamala Harris ain't stomping for us. So arguing about her blackness outside of FBA lineage, I don't give a damn. She ain't stomping for us and she ain't from our lineage. The gate is closed and locked. As far as I'm concerned, I don't really give a damn what she has to say at this point. Unless she's going to say, hey, I didn't made a 360 and I'm, I'm trying to get those tangibles. And unless she's saying that, I don't want to hear none of her drunk, mammy, Hindu babble. You understand? So, I say all that to say, it's very important that we network with like-minded people so we ain't got to depend on the commandies and all of these weird people to misrepresent us and our lineage. You see? But anyway, man, y'all go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com HiddenHistoryMuseum.com to learn 